roll, Discovery. Through the apocalypse. I'm Ben, as always, I'm joined by Gaz. Hello. And Mike. Hello. And this week is a movie episode, and we're talking about 1984. It's grim dark. <laughs> it's depressing. Took me two attempts to get to this film. <laughs> well, we're talking about the film, but I guess. We'll reference the book. It's all kind of. The themes are the same. It's isn't all it? a bleak dystopian future. Which is coming to, to pass. Coming to a town near you. <laughs> <laughs> It's just over your future, it's going to a town near you. And if not, it means it's already there. Yeah. Yep. Uh, anyway. <laughs> who's trying to lighten who, the mood. Yeah, who's listening this week, Mike? Who's our top listeners? Oh, we got. Oh, oh God, where's that in Canada? Usiyus? Asayus? Bronx, so New York, Chicago. I see a moose. I see a moose, there we go. Close enough, it's Canada. <laughs> Been on Perth in Cambodia, Buzzards Bay, where's MA? Massachusetts, uh, Ashfield, Australia, Luton in the United Kingdom, Woodstock, Illinois, Hyderabad in India, Blackburn. Blackburn, oh, I love you, know. Blackburn. Love you, Blackburn. <laughs> Up the Rovers, in Tony, we trust. It must be their other football fans. <laughs> 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 Better than Burnley show. Dad jokes. Everett in Massachusetts, San Jose, California, and Nagano, Japan. Hello, Mumbai, India. Welcome back. Tampa, Florida, Atlanta, Georgia, Bangalore, India, Dublin, Ireland, Guadalajara, Spain, and then we come into the top. You, Albuquerque, New Mexico, yeah. uh, Eugene, Oregon, Benton, oh, where's they are? Arkansas. Arkansas. You never get that one, do you? I always say Arkansas, that's why I want to say Arkansas all the time. And um, it, it's Ship, Ship to Naddy. I'm going to pronounce it Shady Nasty, <laughs> New York. I have no idea what to say, but thank you for listening. We are very popular in upstate New York. Apparently that's where all the, uh, that's where the, all the money is, where the... Like Connecticut. It's a bit this way. Uh, <laughs> Does yeah. that mean we're going to get invited to Bohemian uh, Grove? <laughs> the problem with us is this. This is symptomatic of the three of us. Is it would be amazing if we had a Patreon that listeners could donate money to and like help us with the running costs of the show. But we're too fucking lazy to set one up. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> one day, listener, yeah. you rich fuckers in shady nasty, <laughs> we will have some sort of facility where you can send us a dollar or two. Or send us to Bohemian Grove. That'd be really great. Yeah. I'd go to Bohemian Grove for a week, wouldn't you? Week on the lash. I wouldn't have to sneak in, though, man. Well, no, obviously, we'd be inviting guys. Oh, uh, yes, of course. Um, yeah. yeah. I'm talking about stocks and trades and bonds and piss up the tree. <laughs> what are you boys doing? We do a podcast. <laughs> <laughs> What's a podcast? <laughs> well, all right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, stocks and shares, mate. Yeah, that's it. <laughs> <laughs> all right, then. Insider uh, trading. That's it's a good it. term of which I know. I don't know what it means, but yeah, we can say we are. Get them to invest loads of money with us. Just do a run. I don't fuck around to see us again. <laughs> Buy high, sell low. No, it's the way round. <laughs> We're broke. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, I'm Guy Habsburg. I'm a hedge fund hedge fund broker. There you go. Boom. Right, I'm just gonna <laughs> give me some money and I'll invest it. I'll make it make it double the amount back. Then he started talking to you for about forty five minutes. You just stare at him blankly. And then you're like. I think we're mistaken. I cut hedges. <laughs> I, I landscape your garden. <laughs> I'll give you Who a shrubbery. Kidding? I couldn't even fucking do that. <laughs> it was like a bombs hit it, wouldn't it? <laughs> <laughs> I could do the smashing part. I right. you should have used dynamite gas. <laughs> <laughs> well, have, they, have you ever seen when they got rid of that whale? Yeah. Have you ever seen him? Yeah. 
it's like seventies. If this is for real, it's yeah. not satire. It's like a local news, you know, like seventies style. And this massive washed up whale. I'm sure we've had it on the podcast. We might have done. Yeah. But it's like they're basically it's been there for fucking weeks and it stinks and it's right in and like it's fucking huge. I don't know what to do. in some bright spark in the authorities, like yeah. somebody in the emergency services says, "We'll fucking blow it up with dynamite." I like his thinking. <laughs> what do you think happened? He just went everywhere. Yeah. <laughs> it rained dead rotting whale for miles! <laughs> Why didn't anyone get a flamethrower and just give it a cremation? Come on to the stink. I don't know. Like yeah, it. but the smell has gone after a bit, isn't it? Yeah. I mean... Just get a pack of hyenas. Uh, or get some hyenas. Was dynamite really cheaper than, like, four tractors? Probably, yeah. Do a little five track, not buy them, borrow yeah, them. Yeah, so we've been fighting a 20 year war on terror. There's a fuck ton of military surplus. If you've got the money and you're a fucking town government, you can buy some dynamite. It was a case of a sheriff who had a fuckload of dynamite yeah. that he's never got to use. Yeah. He'd maybe watch the A team that morning. <laughs> he got given a load of funding after the war on terror kicked off, bought some C4 in the hope one day he'd use it. And yeah. this was his chance. And this was his chance? Didn't work. No. Shame. Oh, well. well, I'm not sure. Well, it is a shame. Yeah, so don't you know use what? dynamite to do your garden. But <laughs> put your water feature in here. You may want to step back. <laughs> in fact, you may want to go around that corner there. That's where I'm going. Put on these goggles and you this bomb yourself, vest. You put yourself a little bunker of sandbags and bricks. <laughs> you can't get down behind it. Why do you need a bomb disposal robot to do the garden? <laughs> uh, so. It's all ben, about the charm. Would you like to inform the listeners, if they're new, how things work around here? Yeah, so first, we're going to do some weird news. This is some weird stuff we found in the net. Might take 20 minutes, half an hour or so. And then we'll crack on with the main thrust of today's topic, which is 1984 and the bleak dystopian future it promises us all and that we're probably living in. And I had a massive existential crisis watching this film. Hey. <laughs> Let's get the boys' views on this week's weird news. Uh, this is the Daily Mail. Exclusive. UK, exclusive. She tried to kill us. Indiana mother who adopted six-year-old Ukrainian girl with dwarfism has been charged with abandonment but claims her daughter was found to be a 22-year-old sociopath masquerading as a child. <laughs> And this won my weird shit of the week. It's award. a fucking Stephen uh, King novel, isn't it? <laughs> yes, yeah, Jesus much. Christ! Um, scroll down for me, please, Mike. Oh, yeah, yeah. It has all the elements of a horror movie. An unsuspecting Christian couple adopts an adorable little girl, only to discover she's an adult psychopath masquerading as a child. Mm. If the premise sounds familiar, that's because it's virtually the exact oh. plot of 2009 big screen chiller Orphan where a pigtailed youngster tries to murder her family when it's revealed she's 33. Oh, must have slipped me by that Yeah, one. must have. Mm. Oh, pigtails, they're in the news recently. <laughs> Coming soon to a bargain bin near you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I was just about to say, sorry, there's a picture of the mother, but I didn't know because it's only a headshot. I was about to say, if you thought she was six, fucking shame <laughs> on you. <laughs> <laughs> oh, she's uh, 45. Uh, Christine Barnett and her ex-husband Michael Barnett, 43, and a little dumped Ukrainian-born Natalia Grace and an apartment in Lafayette, Indiana, in 2013 before moving to Canada one month later and breaking off contact. Wow. It's, um... It's I, I could believe she was six if you told me she was six. Yeah. He, I, now that I took the piss out of her, but based on this one photograph, if you said, oh, this is my six-year-old with dwarfism, I wouldn't... I don't know if I'd really question it. She doesn't look like a six-year-old dwarfism. She's like a normal six-year-old. Well, yeah. Nah, she looks like she's got a dwarfism. Do you think? Yeah. All right, let's scroll down a bit more. <laughs> let's get the full story. Police say the girl was left to fend for herself for three years despite having a rare form of dwarfism, which means that she's three foot tall and has problems walking. But in an exclusive interview with Daily Mail TV at an undisclosed location, Christine insists it's a major flaw in their case. Natalia was not a nine-year-old. As charging documents claim, she was actually 22. Barnett claims the true victims are her and her family, who were terrorised for years by the mysterious imposter who then stab them in their sleep, Jesus. pushed her towards an electric fence, and poured bleach on her coffee. The movie Orphan is exactly what happened. 
She would make statements and draw pictures saying she wanted to kill family members, roll them up in a blanket, and put them oh. in the backyard, she told Daily Mail TV. What a nightmare! <laughs> Leona's, was... Leona's girls draw like rabbits and <laughs> weddings and like. <laughs> Unicorns, I don't know. Yeah, it's all very happy shit. Yeah. <laughs> well, she was standing over people in the middle of the night. You couldn't go to sleep. We had to hide all the sharp oh. objects. Jeez. I saw her putting chemicals, bleach, Windex, something like that in my coffee. And I asked her, what are you doing? She said, I'm trying to poison you. <laughs> the media is painting me to be a child abuser, but there's no child here, said Barnett. I was abusing a grown adult, <laughs> I'll have you know. <laughs> <laughs> Natalia was a woman. She had periods. She had adult teeth. She never grew a single inch, which would happen even with a child of dwarfism. The doctors all confirmed she was suffering a severe psychological illness only diagnosed in adults. She was jumping in a moving cars. She was oh, imagine being on the wrist. opposite carriageway. I swear a fucking dwarf just jumped out of that fucking car. <laughs> oh, a child. <laughs> she was doing things you could never imagine a little child doing. Before criminal charges were levelled at them on September the 11th, Barnett and ex-husband Michael were hailed as exemplary parents who raised child genius Jake Barnett. Diagnosed with autism at age two, Jake nonetheless had his first academic paper published at 12 and by 15 was studying at a prestigious physics institute. Yeah, but nobody's ever going to touch his cock. <laughs> oh, they will. Probably his fucking tutors. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> You know, the Barnets experienced foster parents who ran a children's daycare from their Westerfield, Indiana home collected the curly-haired youngster from Florida in May 2010. While living with the Barnets, the town's adoption was completed in November that year. In a frank and tearful interview with Daily Mail TV, Christine Barnett insisted she treated the new addition to her family as if she were a biological child. She had no hesitation accepting Natalia, despite learning she had a bone growth disorder named... <laughs> something... Go on, have a go, Mike. Spondy, lopy, meti, tarful, seal, disla, plazia. Yeah. Uh, I think that went far enough. Well, well, yeah, yeah, fair enough. Which causes short stature, skeletal abnormalities and problems with vision. Uh, given just 24 hours to complete the emergency adoption, the couple raced to an adoption centre in Florida to sign the paperwork and meet their six-year-old daughter. They gleaned precious few details of her background. Natalia had been in the US for two years, had a Ukrainian birth certificate, reading September 4th, 2003, and needed a home immediately because her previous adopted parents gave her up for uh, undisclosed reasons. Uh, knifey reasons. <laughs> Probably. <laughs> You'd think they'd have made a reason like that clear. They're like, hey, she's not actually six, she's 22 and wants to kill us. Right. Ben, Ben, you own a pet shop, right? Okay. <laughs> you get, <laughs> you've got That'd this, be nice, actually, yeah. You've got this puppy. Yeah. It, fuck, it's a killer. Right. It's killed three chickens, had a go at a small child. You don't want to kill it. You can't just put a spade on its head. You can't stove its head. Somebody in. comes in. You could do that to a puppy anyway. Yeah. Somebody comes in desperate for a puppy. You know what I mean? Well, no, I'm going to give them the good puppies first. Yeah, you've got none left. Well, let's see what you do on that one. Oh, do you want to get it? Is it you got kids? All right. How experienced a dog owner are you? Okay. Have you got kids? Yeah, I have, and yes, I'm a very experienced dog owner. You probably don't want this one, he's a bit bitey. Comparing, all right, maybe a better analogy instead of comparing this mentally ill child to a dog would be a used car. Ah, no, there you go. Is it good all right? Yeah, perfect every time. Beautiful little room, mate. a cut and shut. <laughs> <laughs> it's two cars welded together. and the Two the back ends are on it together. <laughs> the two back ends are on it together. How does it run? Lovely. But she, the mother, the adoptive mother, didn't do the equivalent of kicking the tyres, did she? No. 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 <laughs> That's true. <laughs> when was the day that it realised it wasn't a child and it was a psychopath? A year, year later. Oh, man. A year later. Yeah, so they adopted year. her in 2010. So and she by kept up the pre pretense for a year yeah. being a kid. Imagine being treated like a nine, though, when you're 22. Yeah. I mean, wouldn't the other kids drive you fucking mental? I mean, it's nice eating cake all day and like, going to parties and stuff, but sitting there with your little fucking hat on your head, right, and the sparklers in your fucking <laughs> ice cream, while like 25 fucking other nine-year-olds run around screaming. What Six-year-olds? Six year did you say nine? Oh, when they first got us, you yeah. six then. All right. You know, wouldn't you somebody <laughs> think... You know, wouldn't they just give me my own house if they knew I was 22 and I wouldn't have to fucking... You know what I mean? Like, I swear to God, you say 
talk about Tinky Winky to me one more fucking time. I'm gonna pull bleach down your mum's throat. You know, like, fuck up. Pokemon? What the fuck are they? Fuck is a Pokemon? I grew up in Ukraine. Exactly. In the Ukraine. I ate fucking dirt for breakfast, bitch! My first memory is my mother's arm being surgically attached in a rusty car! <laughs> <laughs> After we were bombed on a refugee convoy! <laughs> oh, a Pokemon is! <laughs> oh, man. And why. Like, why wasn't she adopted in the Ukraine? Why did she have to leg it over it? Well, this is. People like to adopt children from troubled regions, don't mm. they? Especially if they're f- well, an experienced foster couple. They might think that, hey, well, she said in the, in the, I read it in the article, oh, my, my life was so good, I wanted to adopt a child from somewhere mm. less privileged to give them a taste of that, to give them that. And I suppose it's a noble reason. Yeah. But not when they're a 22 year old sociopath. Dwarf. But has anyone yes. killed yet? <laughs> I mean, I suppose the equivalent is, I mean, Mike Houston Game of Thrones. Yeah. You got Tywin Lannister just sat on the bog. <laughs> Next thing you know, your dwarf son comes in with a crossbow. Yeah. You got no chance at it. You're the most vulnerable. This is Game of Thrones all over again. As, was it, we'll have to read the rest of the article, but surely somebody has like got hold of the dwarf and like I don't know, done a swab test. There's got to be a way of like knowing how old a person is, isn't there? Or a good. Well, so she's got adult teeth. Well, that'd be a dead. Yeah, deal, a dental wouldn't? records for stuff. Yeah. yeah. Natalie was extremely nervous. You could see she was going to need a lot of support and care. We did notice immediately in the parking lot that she couldn't walk. Oh, no shit. There was nothing in the paper. She <laughs> said words starting that, <laughs> stating that. Over the next few days, the couple showered Natalia with attention, taking her to Disney World, enjoying ice cream, treats, and playful pillow fights with her three brothers to slowly bring her out of her shell. When they took Natalia to the beach the first time, she did something that would leave the couple speechless. The boys rushed into the water and Natalia wants to be carried into the ocean. Michael and myself are physically exhausted, so we have to just wait a few minutes. With that, she just got up and ran into the ocean. Uh, I remember looking at Mike and thinking, what's going on? She couldn't walk a second ago, and now she just got up and ran. Barnett grew more alarmed when he saw the little girl naked for the first time. I was giving her a bath and noticed she had full pubic hair. <laughs> I was so shocked. I used to be told she was six years old, and it was very apparent she wasn't. There were further clues to an apparent deception. Natalia shunned dolls and toys, sought the company of teenage girls, and appeared to use sophisticated vocabulary way beyond <laughs> someone her age. One year this went on. I Fuck off, you cunt. <laughs> <laughs> she didn't have any trace of a foreign accent, and when the family asked a Ukrainian friend to speak within their native language, Natalia couldn't understand or describe her homeland. At the time, uh, I ran a little school and I remember she said to me, these children are exhausting, I don't know how you do it. <laughs> I was like, you're supposed to be a child yourself. It was like something that her mum would say as she dropped her kids off. <laughs> it's very hard to decide how old she is because she has such a, uh, such a unique look. But at the time, I started to believe she was probably a teenager. But I didn't have any regrets, it's like I wanted to do. I felt overwhelming love for her. Barnett says she soon began finding bloody clothing in the trash, suggesting Natalie was having a period and trying to conceal the evidence, so in Italia. She sought out the help of her family physician who ordered bone density tests to establish Natalia's yeah. age. When the results suggested the little girl was indeed at least 14 or over, Barnett says she switched the princess outfits and pink dresses for more appropriate clothes and hopefully fucking upped her fucking school in a bit. Yeah, <laughs> Jesus. But as questions swirled around her age and her true identity, Natalia's behaviour began to deteriorate. And obviously we get the bleach drinking, smearing bodily fluids on the wall, making death threats and hearing voices. Oh god, that's a horrible line, that top one there. Yeah, Barnett recalls watching a gas on a baby monitor as Natalia attacked a baby boy when she was out oh of the god. room. Wow. Uh, Barnett claims that Talia tried to drag her onto an electric fence during a 2012 birthday outing. She was placed long term at a state run psychiatric unit because she was allegedly posed a risk to others. Well, no shit. Well, I well don't know it, basically, the, the Barnett's primary care physician, Andrew McLaren, dated, uh, said in March 2012, he says that Talia's 2003 birth date was clearly inaccurate and that Talia had a career out of pretending to be a young girl. He said that Talia fought him, her parents, and other physicians. Oh. Immigration fraud as well, mm. yeah. Wow. Well, this is a... Oh, I saw that this week and thought, well, that's got to be fucking it. Yeah. Just a bit... It's mental. It's fucking mental. It's fucking mental. 
Um, she's been now considered uh, an adult by the state of Indiana and is legally responsible for herself. So she's saying they're not to blame. She's 22. So well, that's what I wonder. These parents aren't being... They've been accused of it, but they're not being prosecuted with no. it, are they? No. That's good. Because they've, they've not really done anything fucking wrong. No. Uh, it goes on forever, so... Yeah. yeah. Holy fuck. It's interesting, though, isn't it? It's a doozy. What do you think? Just to say the final say on it, I mean, they're experienced foster family, they've dealt with all sorts of kids, they've tried to do something noble, like mm. taking a little girl from a, a less well-off country and giving her a taste of the middle-class American lifestyle, and before you know it, your six-year-old Ukrainian girl has got, is a 22-year-old sociopath. Yeah. I don't think that uh, someone like that who's an experienced foster parent would just go, you know what, fuck it, and just flee to Canada. Yeah. There's got to be a reason for it. Well... Don't adopt dwarfs. <laughs> well, <laughs> anyway, yeah. she'll be all right. There's two distinct career paths she could go into. This girl with dwarfism, porn, in, porn industry. Oh, three, sorry, porn industry, pantomime, and pro wrestling. Yeah, there you go. Independent shows. They always have the midgets on at half time or something. <laughs> Fair enough, right? <laughs> Okay. Man takes emotional support client to work as he fears <laughs> being fired. Uh, yeah, this is a good one. A man in New Zealand was called into a work meeting and feared the worst, so he hired an emotional support client to join him. For Joshua Jack, the suspicion he might lose his job was right. Speaking to News Hub New Zealand on a video call, Jack confirmed his employer, advertising agency FCB, let him go this week. But having Joe the Clown along for the ride definitely lightened the mood, he said. <laughs> I could do an emotional support while not clearing like that. <laughs> That'd be a nightmare. Yeah. You've got a support dog. That's true. I guess I, I'd argue that all dogs are support dogs. Very true. Sorry, Mike. Go on. When his supervisors scheduled the meeting, he said he thought it's either a promotion or worse. I thought it's best to bring professional. And so I paid two hundred dollars and hired a client. And he had it. <laughs> By the time the meeting was over, Jack didn't have a job, but he did have two balloon animals, a unicorn, and a poodle. Fantastic. <laughs> well, good for him. Yep. The process to blow them up and shape them got rather noisy, he said, and the meeting attendees had to tell Joe the clown to be quiet from time to time. Uh, <laughs> brilliant. Yep. I wouldn't have a clone, unless it was the Joker. Hey, but then he wouldn't be making balloon animals, he'd just stab two people in the throat. Or he'd you, make balloon animals out of their intestines. True. You seen the uh, fucking fuss they kicked up in that new Joker movie? Oh yeah, I did see that. The, uh, no, no, it's yeah. an internal document from the army's mm. been released. Did you see that yeah. today? That, basically, it's, I don't know if it's a lot of fuss over nothing, but you know an incel, an involuntary celebrate. Uh, celibate. They have actually they? been responsible for some terrorist mm. activity. Um, and there's a bit of fear that this Joker movie is kind of going to set them off and that there might be another mass uh, shooting at her screaming. Yeah, basically, you know, disgruntled guy down his luck becomes uh, a psychopath. Uh, and what, yeah, what yeah. fucked me off about this army thing that I read, though, it was an internal document sent out, like, basically the army had got wind of there being a threat and were just letting their own employees know, like, hey, if you're out at the cinema this weekend, oh. here's some advice, how to use your training. And I liked how they, they had to put hide, hide as an option, but then, then it said also known as something, something, stick and cover or something. like They had to give it a masculine kind of sounding, mm -hmm. like, we're not saying hide, you know what I mean? Just protect your position. Strategically. Uh, yeah, some, but hide. And I thought, well, that's nice, isn't it? Letting all your what? I know you don't want to necessarily scare the shit out of the general public, but if there's, if you've got wind or something, yeah, uh, I don't know. Well, I think that's all. Saying hide doesn't appeal to the military mindset because mm. you don't hide. You would, I don't know, hunker down, defend your position. It was a lot. It definitely know, said, of, you know, sort of, I don't know. Infiltrate, mm, either something yeah. like. But you wouldn't say hide because that's mm. negative psychology to your yeah. soldiers. So you would. Put the, whatever the phrase the American military uses for its training manuals for hiding. But I thought you the put next, that so it clicks in their head. I thought the and, next oh, line that's was what I do. the double next, speak, Ben. Double well, speak. Well, there you go. The next line was pretty masculine though, because it was something like locate, locate, the locate three exits, hide. But then it was in brackets, also known as blah blah blah. 
And then like the third one was like fight with whatever you can find available to you. So mm. like, well, that makes up for like the oh, yeah. little pussy hiding behind a chair, but I'm gonna fuck you up with a coat bottle. Yeah. Give it a gun. Uh, you know what it is? It's a fucking popcorn bucket over the head <laughs> from behind. Snap the neck. Yeah. Good. Art. That sounds good to me. Yeah. But what? Why are they worried that? Is it because the Joker's an incel? Is he an incel poster boy? Because he gets bullied to shit in the movie, doesn't he? And then snaps, I guess. Is what yeah, I mean, if you look at... I mean, this is a different take on the character. I suppose it's the origin story. It, it was mm. close to an origin story as you ever yeah, get it, the I joke. suppose it's watching and he does a psychotic break. And yeah. It's basically falling down with yeah. clowns. Mm. Yeah. I'd take a clown with me to the cinema. <laughs> not while, so I'm, there's a, not so while I'm with you, you will. So if there's a gun burn, I can hide behind it. Yeah. But I feel really so because the guy who did the Aurora shooting was dressed as the Joker, wasn't he? Yeah, so he was dressed as Heath Ledger's Joker. Yeah, but there's going to be like innocent cosplayers who are just like, I fucking love the Joker, me, I've got to be working forward to this premiere so much. Do, 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 do. And next thing you know, they're fucking face down on the cold fucking yeah. tiles, zip tie behind their back. Yeah, back Some on their big head. chad who's off duty, he's got, I got the motherfucker with his knee in yeah. the back of your head. He's like, ah. <laughs> Although to be fair, this Joker looks a lot more expensive than previous Joe because he's got a um, he's got a nice nicely cut suit waistcoat going mm. on, you know. It's... Well, I'm mm, still gonna watch the film. Oh, so will I. I'm gonna watch Rambo next week. Actually, oh, mate. right. Let's do the last one then. Yep. Then we can call it a, a swift piss break. We can. Oh God, no. Oh, yeah. You saved this one for me. Yeah. Carl Frock. Because you're going to bad mouth Carl Frock now. Carl Frotch or Frotch? Uh, Carl Frotch, I think. He's Carl a boxer Frotch. anyway. He's a, he's a very mm. successful boxer. He believes the world is flat and that's it. He's a forest fan, I believe. He's a fake. Well. Well, that sort of all of a sudden causes. Well, he's been bit around the head a lot, so he probably is a fucking forest fan. <laughs> oh, I read something tragic today related to boxing, just briefly. Nigel Benf, mm. age, age 55, is having a comeback fight. Yeah. I read that and I was oh, like, why? Oh. And then Richie Woodall was saying like a really good, our local hero, Richie Woodall, yeah, former yeah, world champion him, yeah. from Telford. He was basically saying in an interview, look, I still train every day, 10 rounds a day. I'm fit. He's like, but I haven't been getting punched. Like, I couldn't take a fucking punch off anybody. Now. I'm like nearly 50. He's like, I'm not in the game of getting hit. Like yeah. one fucking punch from a pro boxer. I don't know what my brain's going to handle. Mm. He's like, I just think this is fucking tragic. Yeah. I don't know what he's doing. It's because his son's in, isn't he? Because mm. his son fights. Mm. Yeah. And he's... I don't think he's... Mod- I don't know if he's won a title. I think he may have had the title at some point. He hasn't yeah. got it now. I don't Dark think. Destroyer. And Nigel you know, Ben's like, I want a bit of that again. Mm. That's it, they miss it, don't they? It's the Rocky Balboa thing. He's at the fire in his basement. Still got some <laughs> stuff in the basement, you yeah. know? I love that uh, fucking movie, fucking don't me. Big time. I well, watch that again, actually. Good luck to him, Nigel Ben that is, but Mr. Fratch, Carl Fratch, has revealed that he thinks the earth is flat, NASA is a fake. Sure, boxers are known for making outlandish statements, I'm going to knock him out in seven, but Depends even by those on. standards, I'm going to knock him out in seven and the earth is flat. <laughs> this is a spicy hot take. The former world super middleweight champion claims that he doesn't believe that the world is a globe and he won't believe until... Quote, someone like Richard Branson <laughs> launches a mission into space to prove that... How about the mission into space that fucking NASA did? <laughs> Get us thrown his headphones on the floor. Because Carl Frock would rather believe... Carl Frock would rather believe Richard Branson oh, than NASA. I know he's been punched in the head a yeah. lot. But if he can't see the fucking arsolery in that statement... <laughs> it's, uh, he, uh, uh, uh. Apparently, someone like Richard Branson, and I'm quoting, is more believable than the evidence of science and other world space agencies. Oh, let me guess. NASA, because NASA are government shields, but Richard Branson, he'd be allowed to do it without any fucking government He's only been interference, fucking wouldn't he? Taking money from the fucking NHS purse for fucking years, buying a fucking. Uh... Do you think? I mean, educate me if I'm wrong, but no private citizen. He's going to be allowed to build a fucking space machine. Well, right? he, 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 yeah, he wants to put people into space. Richard Branson, he's like a Spaceship 1, which crashed. Spaceship 2, which got to the edge of the Earth. And he wants to put people into space on holidays within 20, 30 years. He wants a space station. Think, space. But wouldn't you as a government, or a world government, or the UN or somebody, have a responsibility no, to check... No, 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 wait, 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 you want to go responsibility to check Mr Branson's not going up there and dropping... Tungsten fucking rods, or whatever they were fucking oh, that's called. True, yeah. You know what I mean? You can just let on, anybody yeah. who wants go up well, there. I'm sure there's probably checks. That's what I'm well. saying, though. Well, like, yeah, so what the fuck does he yeah. think Richard Branson's going to be completely? They can't like, afford it, can they? They don't want to spend the money. They'd rather spend fifty percent on the military. 
Do you know what I mean? That's why they want to outsource it now to private. Yeah, companies. well, you think SpaceX, Elon Musk is yeah. uh, fucking doing all the, I want to go to Mars. I suppose. NASA, yeah. when he's caught up because of president, because yeah. Trump has said, we should go to Mars. Didn't he put a car in space? He, he did. did. So why doesn't he believe... Well, those pictures are fake, Elon man. Musk. They're all well, cartoon, believe, apparently. Yeah, believe Richard, Richard Branson, but not Elon Musk. What's the oh, difference? I see your point, yes. Yeah. Oh, Elon, Elon Musk, Musk is a shill, obviously. I mean, all right, Elon Musk is a very, very clever dude. No, so is Richard Branson. But Elon Musk mm. is far smarter than Richard Branson. <laughs> Richard Branson's a businessman. Yeah. Basically, a you know, good You can business. trust them. <laughs> yeah, you can yeah. trust them. They're destroying the fucking earth. Yeah. <laughs> One good thing he did do, I don't know if it was him personally though, but they signed the pistols when CMI fucked him yeah, up. Yeah, Virgin Records. Yeah, and they let and they actually released the album. There's always the rumour Branson got started in porn, which is why his company's called Virgin, but it's never kind of oh. been. Uh... I don't know. You know, his autobiography. It's one of them things that back when we were at school, sort of the nineties. Richard Branson's autobiography was something you'd see every wanker on a train reading. Mm, Do you know yeah. what I mean? Every stock bro- every insurance broker, every fucking used car salesman, like. I'm sure he probably explains in there. I don't know, actually, the first fucking thing about the guy, to be honest, is he posh, is he... I don't think he's a self-made man self-made as Self-made man, right, but... But, um, I mean, remember, he's, he's basically got successful by dipping his toe into fucking everything. Now you have Virgin uh, Records. Virgin remember trains, Virgin, Virgin Books. Virgin Trains, Virgin Buses, Virgin Books. Virgin, Virgin Cola, the Pammy Bottle. Virgin Cola. Virgin Travel. Virgin Cola. Virgin Pammy Bottle. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah, the Pammy Shake Bottle. I was yeah. thinking of the... Um, the cans. So basically what he's doing is made his way by dipping his toe into everything mm. just before that market goes completely under, getting the fuck out of there. See, I mean, remember all the Virgin record stores there used to be? Mm. And then just before the entire yeah. record industry collapsed, he went, nope, thank you, pulling the plug on that, yeah. take the money. Our price, remember them. I've oh, just realised... Our price, yeah. I might have realised like, that maybe the naivety of what I said a few sentences back, like where I was like, well, private people can't just fuck off into space, can they, without a good... I guess they can. Obviously, Elon Musk is up to that. But then that leads me down to the thing. Do these people not read fucking comic books? This is how, you know, under the guise of, like, yeah, I'm just trying to get to space, man, for the betterment of humanity. That's the guy that rains fire upon us from the yeah, fucking sky. Yeah. He hacks the fucking Star Wars system and just starts nuking like us said, into space. Be checks and balances. Mm. Yeah, but it's all right. You, you have them initial checks and balances. Before you know it, Elon Musk's got a fucking underwater volcano base. He's a supervillain. Well, he's demanding. Take, isn't he? He's demanding ten billion dollars not to destroy capital cities. They can do that now, can't they? Oh, I did. Yeah. You might like the current story in two thousand AD in Judge Dredd's world. Like, there's been like a robot, an AI sort of revolution in um, like the South America, and like uh, they've basically just repl- like wiped out all humans and like and built this sort of human robot society but now they're like they've got nukes pointed at every mm. western city and like dreads over on his way over anyway to have a word i'll find out i'll let you know after yeah. next week yeah and it's like they, they, these robots have used like human real human hair to have mustaches and no way like the robots but with like fancy mustaches and <laughs> scalps that they've stolen from their human victims Grimdark. yeah it's pretty fucking metal but I don't, we don't need to read this. Some fucking dumb boxer thinks the, the earth's flat. Don't punch me, mm-hmm. frock. But, I mean, I'm never going to bump into him. True. Right, so let's start with 1984. <coughs> Surprisingly, made in 1984. Starring John Hurt, Richard Burton and Susanna Hamilton. Film opens... And Rob C. Nesbitt. Eh? Hey? Rob C. Nesbitt in it, yeah. And Edna from Emmerdale is naked in it. Is that Susanna Hamilton? Possibly, yes. She's the one that does full... Yeah, full nudity in the movie, yeah. yeah. She ended up playing an old lady on Emmerdale, which fucked with my head the first time I saw it. <laughs> I didn't even tweet to that. <laughs> the film opens with a quote. Who controls the past controls the future. Who controls the present controls the past. Yeah. Very true. And also, I was the Kane said that in Command and Conquer. Uh, mm-hmm. Very, very brief real-world example. Did you see on Facebook that my Hitler meme was deemed... Yeah. Yes, yes, yeah. I lost the appeal. For the mm. listener, it's a meme of Hitler holding a... It's a photoshopped a, a, a PS4 controller in his hands and it says, Colorized Hitler 1994, playing video games right, that turned into 1944. So, yeah. And they deem that to be against their terms of thingy. And all I can think is that you're not allowed to joke about Hitler or am I not allowed to... 
I don't know. You were blaming him for violent video games, weren't you? Was the point? Mm. Was um, saying that clearly. Oh, here he is. Look, look at this. Look at this man playing video games. Mm. Obviously, turning him violent. Mm. Whereas at the absolute stretch, I can say that they were maybe could say I'm making light of the real reasons behind the Holocaust. At but, a stretch. But, at a stretch, because clearly it's a Photoshop PlayStation Four controller. And the other thing I could just think about: you're not allowed to joke about Hitler. But if I'm not allowed to talk about him or joke about him. Well, we spoke. We just pretending it didn't. It didn't happen. Isn't the British sense of humour joking about tragedy? Yeah. It's not what Philippus, we do. mate. I, I'm hating on this fucking censorship on social media. That's crazy, isn't it? Do you know what I mean? Unless it is hate speech and a mm. court has banned it. Yeah. Or fake news. If if I'd have written at the top of the meme, we can't stop fake news, can you? Of course you can. That's the idea, isn't it? You stop yeah, fake where news. Do you, because, where do you stop? Yeah, because then you can say you can stop satire. Then yeah. you could be. The mainstream media is pumping out fake news every day. Do you know what I mean? It's weird. I know what you're stop, saying. They won't, they won't yeah. block them, though, will they? It'd be good if we could differentiate between fake and not fake, but if you start saying anything that, that's... Because oh, satire just, can That's an education problem, it. mate. Yeah. And they want us dumbed down, you know this. Oh, yeah, of course. I know that. It's, uh, but the reason, I started the, the reason I started the tangent, though, was to connect it to that, literally that first quote, control the fucking past. Have you seen that... I need to check the veracity. the veracity of this, but I did see p uh, pictures on Twitter of bins full of books in libraries uh, where young woke people are like, we're getting rid of all this old fucking white literature and we're, we're going to fill the library with a more diverse no, that's wrong. book range. Completely wrong. It comes from a place of, th they think they're thinking right, if you see what I mean. Like, yeah. Yeah, but, but, doesn't doesn't like, just, but you can't doesn't, just you can't get rid of the history. But isn't that just a tamer version of the Nazis burning yes, books? But they don't see it that way. But that's well, this is why we're going to get into with the movie. Oh, it's man, called should, Come Fuck You. Should never truth. destroy a book of any kind, no. it's just, unless it's um, and it's how they want to no. and they want to change books unless that have the Bible. No, I was going to say <laughs> you know <laughs> stuff like Huckleberry hate. Finn and crime. Is that a hate crime? No, I'm just saying this <laughs> is a hate crime. Oh. But you know, older literature that has racially insensitive language. Well, yeah, again, again, I'm a white person saying this, right? Okay, hands yeah. up. But surely you can't just, excuse the pun, whitewash it from history. Surely it's better that it exists course, as an article yeah. and we can no. look back at what the attitudes were. The whole point of writing anything down, number one, well, there's two points. It's a really lot of points, to be well, fair. Well, two main ones, right? Well, no. Two I can massively agree with, right? First of all, it's the, the, the zeitgeist of the time. Mm. And you can never judge... You can't look back at, like, Huckleberry Finn and say, hey, that's horribly racist. No, no, that's the zeitgeist of the time. Yeah. That's fine, mm. right? But then you have, like, Nazi propaganda, but that's inherently evil in a way because that's saying that, hey... But that mm. stuff should be there. It should be kept. Yeah. Because the whole point of history is that you look back at what the people before you did and say, hey, well, they were in a similar situation. Mm. What do we do now? And you learn from either their mistakes or you build on their successes. Exactly. But somebody's trying to control if you, the The minute past, you start they? burning books and changing the past is the minute you have an authoritarian society. Of course. Mm. And that's the problem with a lot of, a lot of misguided, in my opinion, young people who and I do believe that they believe they're fighting for the side of right, but they believe it's so hard that they're blinkered yeah. yes. to their behaviour. Because this is why I was getting annoyed with a certain member of my family, and you know who, who you would think would be against labels because him being a, a minority, but he's obsessed with labelling everybody. Obsessed with it, like he literally won't listen to your opinion because you're a fucking boomer, you're a gammon, you're whatever, and it's like, ah, like, engage me, talk to me, you fucking yeah. can't dismiss me with just like a fucking, ah, oh, whatever, you boomer. It's like, ah, ay, 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 ay. Well, they're idiots, aren't they? But then again, what was I like when, he, when I was his age? You can't well, tell me nothing, copper. Exa we'd have been exactly the same if we'd have grown up in that generation. Don't listen, don't, don't listen to you, oldie. <laughs> yeah. Oh, man. You know? Anyway, so you come to the um, Ingsoc, is the, right. the place where this is set, the, the country. Also, Oceana, this is Ingsoc, mm. the particular district. Right. Uh, in the book, it's Airstrip 1, which is. Because there's three countries, isn't there? Yeah. Eurasia, Eurasia, East Asia, and Oceania. Oceania. 
you know, you'd be happy if you lived in Oceania because there's like a big gap between you and your neighbours and the rest of the country, <laughs> and then there's a big fucking ocean. Yeah. Well, uh, yeah, in Oceania is like Britain, Plus America, and, and their allies. Is it South America as well in the book? How is it? And then you've got like Eurasia, which is Europe, mm. and then East Asia obviously is, you know, Japan and all the Far East countries. Yeah. Do you know where Australia falls into that? Mm. Maybe, I don't know. Uh, Opens with a, a, an ode to Oceania, the workers, the strivers, the builders, and they're the ones that keep this country going. Mm. Patriotism, a lot of jingoism. And you've got perpetual war. Yeah, that Basically, the three states are always at war with one another. Yep. And that's just the way it is. One's allied to the other, fighting the other, and they swap around. We've got perpetual war now, isn't it? The war causes the war on terror is perpetual. The war's war. not meant to be war; it's meant to be continuous. Mm. Mm. That's it. What do they call it? It's the forever war. The forever war. war yeah. <laughs> yeah. But it is. Um, at the moment, Oceania is fighting Eurasia, uh, who are barbarians. Mm. Shit music. Oh, you know who did the music for this film? Eurasia. The Eurythmics. <laughs> oh, the Eurythmics. Uh, was it? Mm. It's close. Very close. And it seems that every morning you get your um, 30 minutes hate where there's a guy called Goldstein who is the arch traitor to Oceana. He's the one that's funding and I giving the ideas to the, the resistance and trying to bring down your glorious country. And basically everyone just screams at a massive TV yep. every morning. Demonization of the others. Demonization of language, the good versus evil. Yeah. Exactly what Trump's doing now. Yeah. All the party members are in bl light blue uniforms. Mm. Overalls, I say you just determine you're a member of the party, you're all dressed the same, the kids are in uniform, the higher yeah. party members are in darker blue overalls, the higher party members still are in suits. The face of Big Brother appears on the screen. He is a menacing man with a moustache, let's describe him as. You've been in. <laughs> I was going to do an impression of the. the, the moving on, sorry, the Geordie guy on Big Brother. <laughs> sorry. Yeah. I know what you're saying, but this is Big Brother, and yeah. he's. 11 or 7 pm. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? I have come in from work at 3 in the morning, yeah. and we're flicking the channels, and Big Brother's on, and I'm like, everyone's asleep. And I still sit there for like two minutes, and think, why am I watching people oh, sleep? I did that when I was on and, and, and mm. flick past it. And it's easy, it's suckered into that shit. Can I tell you a stunning confession? Go on then. The first series of Big Brother, I, 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 didn't I watch the first, became watch the second. obsessed. <laughs> really? Obsessed. I was one of those people who may have needed bereavement counselling <laughs> when it was over. I didn't, but you know what I mean? I became fully obsessed. It, it, wasn't, it wasn't the cliche back then. It, it was an interesting experiment at that I point. I agree with that. The first season was an experiment. And it had a lot of drama to it, and it, you know, and it had a good storyline, the cheeky little chappy. It didn't start to pick up to about halfway through, and I thought, well, I'm not going to go in halfway through. Mm. I thought, I won't bother. The second series, I did watch that all the way uh, through. It was interesting. It was the second series, no, the first series. Hang on. But it was like, I would find myself doing it, because there was a live feed on, like, after midnight on Channel 4 Plus 1 or whatever, and I had exactly the same thing where I'd been sat there for ages, and it's just one person, everyone else is asleep, there's one person in the kitchen... Just looking at something or doing something and like, this is ridiculous. <laughs> this is, uh, another good example of that was when uh, Leona and the kids were away, I hadn't tied, done any tidying in the house and I was playing Red Dead Redemption and one of the missions was to uh, like clean, Tied, yeah. clean, up, <laughs> clean up your barn. So I was like controlling my digital character <laughs> while he like, picked up all the shit. <laughs> and, then, and then I suddenly dawned on me and I was like, Oh, I should probably really. <laughs> she walked in just at that moment. <laughs> Can you imagine? <laughs> what are you doing? <laughs> you just do a Simpsons bit like that. I'm doing, the, I'm doing the virtual clearing, doing the virtual yard work. She's like, and Marge is like, but I tell you the yard all the time, and you won't. Yeah, this is virtual. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not really doing it. But the character John, you know, I just built that barn myself. Do you know what I mean? And I was trying to convince my wife and kid to move back in with me in the game, and you know, I needed to pitchfork some fucking cow yeah. shit. I did do the dishes after that. <laughs> Let's continue the film. Yeah. Um, so everyone stands to the anthem. There's fanatical chanting. There's and there's propaganda being played as the workers walk around. They're going in these like, underpasses, mm. and it's like, you know, oh, 
tank production was up 43% this year. We made 50,000 tanks, mm. you know, oh, well, great stuff. They were introduced the main character, Winston, who uh, works altering past newspaper articles. Wow. Uh, one of the things he alters is that the chocolate ration has gone down from 35% to 25%. Mm. But then he doctors that to, re oh, it's gone up from 20 to 25%. <laughs> <laughs> and there's a little bit of Mandela effect in there, yeah. I think. And that, that's why, you know, I'm not a, a proponent of the Mandela effect at all. And I think that's why, I think Mandela, the Mandela effect is fake news. Yeah, there's people out there, mainly Trump supporters. Mm. <laughs> Who have a completely different view of history mm. than the rest of us? Yeah, I can believe they it. They think that Auschwitz was a holiday camp. Mm. Yes, I've met a lot of us and I. She's yeah. not a pleasant person. Mr. T never said I pity the fool on the A team once. Didn't he? No, he said it in Rocky Three. Ah. I think that's what I read the other day. Anyway, it's not really Mandela effect, but Mandela effect. Oh well, that <laughs> is Mandela effect. It's fake news. Yeah. Mr. T did not say, I pity the fool. <laughs> <laughs> what we can gather in this dystopian future, there has been atomic wars, mm. and other wars, and there are video screens everywhere that can see you as well. Mm. As they, um, they do that now. Oh, yeah. That smart TV. I haven't taken yeah. the fucking camera on my webcam. No, you haven't. To be, well, fair, though, last one. to be fair, this is an idea that lots of people have fantasised about. I'm sorry to keep mentioning the A-Team, but I've literally watched nothing but the A-Team for the last four weeks where I've been off work. There was an episode the other day where he's like, I can see you. He's talking to him through a screen and like, and uh, you can see me, but I can see you. I can hear everything you're saying. It was basically Skype, but yeah. this is from the 80s. People have fantasised about that being a thing. Of course, yeah, they were looking fucking Jetsons. But fuck me, he wrote yeah. this in 1940 something, so yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But it's fucking true that the TVs go both ways. Yeah. Why do you put a fucking, and not, oh, I wasn't just saying you, why do, fuck loads of people with a laptop put a black fucking bit of tape over the. Uh, That's it, thanks to Edward Snowden, we know now. Yeah. We're not stupid, our phones, we're not stupid. We've been talking about adopting a cat. Well, what the fuck do you think my advertisements are now? Yeah. It's nothing but uh, cat adoption and cat food and all that. You know, if I wasn't internet savvy, I'd be thinking, oh, the universe is conspiring to make me sad if I had my dead cat. But no, it's, it's literally, like, two smartphones in the house. All we've talked yeah. about is cats for fucking a week, right? Like, yeah. All of a sudden, I'm saying dog videos in my feed. Mm. Uh, someone in the house is watching them. And I mean, I like watching them too. But it's not the point, it's like, well, where's that come from? Maybe you used to have that. Yeah. YouTube music is the best example I can give you. Like this mm. week, I'm going to listen to the, um, the, 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 the classic Bloodhound Gang album, oh. One Fierce Beer Coaster. Yeah. Okay. And I listened to that album all the way through on YouTube. Right. Now on the YouTube music app, I am inundated right. with Bloodhound Gang songs. <laughs> yeah. Oh, it's going on your algorithm. Yeah, mm. I listened to the album once. Uh, oh, the algorithm. YouTube is so confused mm. about who I am as a person. <laughs> <laughs> it's so confused. Because I like videos of SJWs getting, like, destroyed in debates, it, it thinks I'm fucking... It's bomb it thinks I want to listen to, like, far-right speakers and fucking, like, why feminists are cunts, you know? But it's just, like, it doesn't even literally say it, but it, it, it's so confused about who I am, like... So, it's Use trying the algorithm. To that should be the fucking motto of our generation. Yeah. Confuse the algorithm. Well, then the other thing is, I use my account to show uh, cartoons to the kids too. So it's even so <laughs> it thinks it thinks I'm an alt right marijuana smoking fucking brony. I've got no fucking clue who I am. I must be on all the lists. <laughs> it is concerning though these algorithms determine what you're watching, what you're reading. It's trying to turn me off. Oh, right, because it thinks I'm on. Yeah. It's like, oh, he likes SJWs getting uh, destroyed, does he? And I'm, I'm the same. I'm on you. YouTube and I, I just mm. scroll through what's recommended. You know, they recommend it to me. Yeah. Are they forming, pushing me down a, a route, forming my, forming my opinions and shit? I get music videos, Warhammer fan art, <laughs> and uh, tits. <laughs> hey, tits, tits. Tits. Well, no, tits. I, I am not gonna lie. I have literally typed into the search engine of YouTube. Boobs. Yeah. <laughs> uh. But I do like that YouTube has an understanding of human psychology because that doesn't show up in your search history. No. So no. it's not got me in trouble with, you know, the fam lamb. <laughs> uh. 
Yeah, so they can watch you through the screens. Mm. And uh, Winston has a diary hidden in the wall. Having mm. a diary is strictly forbidden, but there's a spot in his apartment, his little flat, where he can be at a blind view of the spot. videos, can be a blind yeah. spot, and he writes in his diary. Also, they have the world's worst alarm clock, because that mm. fucking book, the shit, do you remember that? From yeah. the film? Oh. Everyone writes so to Winston's in a 35 to 40 group, so he's woken by the world's worst alarm clock. Mm. Gets out of bed in his state issued pyjamas. Oh, yes. Lights his victory cigarette. <laughs> and they're like, right, 35 to 40 group, mandatory exercise, touch your toes. Uh, and, and he literally says, like, Winston, uh, Smith, Winston, J, number, whatever. You know, you can touch your toes, come on. Show more effort. And fuck me. Nightmare that would be, wouldn't it? Jesus. Yeah. Can you imagine it? Yeah. I mean, I, I guess it was the logical conclusion to what was sort of communism at the time. Mm. Well, I'm fascist. Remember, the Nazis and the yeah. Japanese of the Second World War, they keyed on those videos of showing lots of youngsters working out. Yeah. yeah. It's a mixture of everything, wasn't it? Mm. Well, why did they want you to be fit? So you're on fight for exactly. war, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Because if Winston's age group ever gets caught up, they want him to at least touch his fucking toes. Yeah, you want him to at least be, a, be able to carry something for us, despite, Winston. Yeah, despite the fact they're feeding him with cigarettes and... I I, tell you, I think in the mm. book it's gin. It's a clear spirit in the in the show. Is the idea the of letting them have the cigarettes to make them ill? Or uh, as I think it's, just, it's, it's, a, it's a... It's an addiction. It keeps, I imagine it's a, bit of a to, treat, isn't it, to keep people going? You get a cigarette rash, you know, I'd imagine. Yeah. Yeah. I suppose so it's, it's just another treat. form of control, I suppose. Yeah. It's, it's as addictive be, as Be smoke. good, or we'll withdraw your cigarette yeah. ration. Yeah. yeah. Basically, exactly. yeah. yeah. Cool. And despite all of the plenty, no one seems to have any razor blades because everyone's asking him for it. You've got any razor yeah. blades, and I haven't been asked why. I've been using it for six weeks. Oh, fuck me. Despite all the plenty, yeah. no one's got anything. Mm. Oh, they always seem to have money. And that's the mm. thing with the, um, what is it, state authoritarian communism, state authoritarian communism, mm. Mm. is that when, back in the early 90s, when obviously um, East and West were reunified, East and West mm. Germany, the Chancellor at the time of West Germany, I think it was Helmut Kohl, said, all right, yeah, it's not a problem, you exchange your fucking East German Deutsche Marks mm. for the West German Deutsche Marks at one to one. Mm. He found out that people had no sources of fucking money mm. But they had nothing to spend it on. Right. There yeah. was some very wealthy East German just workers. Mm. Because it took you five years to get a car. Right. It took, you know, there's waiting lists for well, everything. Well, to build it, yeah. yeah. <laughs> you know. So they had mm. no shortage of cash, mm. but because everything's issued by the state, mm. you, you don't uh, you don't get stuff as fast. So he made that mistake and it did cause a minor economic crisis for Germany at the time. Anyway, topics of conversation in, in the staff canteen where Winston works. Uh. My favourite one I picked out was, did you see the prisoners hang last night? <laughs> and that, they show these re revolutionaries, these, these resistance mm. people, yeah. being hung on TV. And later in the film we see prisoners of war being hung and then shot in the back of the head. Yeah. It's um, in the canteen and they're like... I don't even think this is meat. <laughs> yeah, because it's, they never know what they're eating. Uh, it's got chunks in it, uh, and it tastes like meat. But I'm sure it's not meat. And we meet him again later on in the film. That's Rob C. Nesbitt. Is that Rob C. Uh, Nesbitt? Yeah, Fucking yeah, hell! Yeah. And the one guy who comes in, he's like, he works in news in Newspeak, and this is mm. what they're trying to do. They're trying to shrink the language. Mm. So you know, the one guy says, "Oh, double plus good." Right. That means, oh, yeah, that was fucking great. That, yeah, really. Yeah. He's only just going to do all them expletives and, mm, and, yeah. and adjectives we would have. Mm. Double plus good. Someone says it's a beautiful thing, the destruction of language. Yes, they do, yeah. <laughs> but everywhere seems to be a blasted shithole. <laughs> <laughs> it's hard to do. It's like, it's still, it looks like... 1942 in London during the Blitz where there's rubble everywhere still but right. there's still enough homes to kind of have people living yeah. in and even mm. the streets are strewn with... When you hear bombs going off, can't you? Yeah, I, I thought actually during the film that, that, that the bombs going off were false flags. Mm. Could be. Because I, yes. uh, I don't think that Oceania is actually at war with anybody. Mm. They no, just they'd have feed... no way of knowing, would you? Yeah, yes, you'd have no way of knowing because you're yeah. fed... All the information you're fed is by the state. Oh, we're at war with Eurasia. Yeah, but so we need to 
increase our production. Everyone needs to work harder. Your rations mm. are being reduced, but we're not telling you that. They're actually being increased. <laughs> yeah. mm. And, hey, you know, you know, other bombs, oh, we're being bombed by, oh, we're being bombed by East Asia now. Yeah. Oh, but, and I think that the industrial lives. military complex is in Takes charge over, of yeah. <laughs> But in the proletarian areas, yeah. you've got, your, you've got, your, well, you've got your, your inner party, mm. your, or you've got your top party, you know, guys in suits, yeah. inner party in the darker blue coverall, overalls, your, your outer party in the lighter blue, and then you've got the proletariat, which is probably where we'd be at, mm. going to our pubs, basically just kind of living life as we are now, you, you work, you have some money, you buy stuff, you got the pub, you fuck, it doesn't matter. Yeah. The inner part, the outer part, you, for example, can't have sex. We live in the uh, illusion of freedom, don't we? Live we live in the illusion of freedom, they live in the illusion, well, we live in the illusion of freedom and they live mm. under control, but one, but mm. still having the illusion of freedom. Well, they're told that freedom is slavery. Yeah, that's true. So, so they don't want freedom. No, they don't. That's true. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's true. Yeah, you're right. Because they've inverted everything, haven't they? War is peace. Freedom is slavery. Ignorance is strength. The so the proles who get porn and songs and music and mm. and are allowed to kind of just go about as they please with a police force trying to vote. Oh, they're they slaves. Squalor. They live in squalor. It's like living in the blitz, isn't mm. it? You're living in a bombed out fucking area, but. You know, you still got the pub every day. Because the worker, the, par- <laughs> the party members, and the workers, they're... They're told that, they're, oh, you, you, even though they're in slavery, this is freedom. Yep. <laughs> That's it. It's incredible. It's like today, we're yeah, free, we're yeah, not free, are we? We're wage slaves. Yeah, war is peace, freedom is slavery. You, you know, see, ignorance is strength. you see how far you can get today with no money at all. <laughs> then see how free you are. Mm. <laughs> Yeah. You know what I mean? That's true. Well, yeah. so like we uh, we touched on this last week, didn't we? But we posted a thing about being modern slaves, and a few people got a bit uppity with us. But, yeah. I'm not denying it's it's considerably better. Yeah, but it's true. But it's still well, slavery. Yeah. The idea of actual freedom is yeah. like, 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 why have I been like? I have done nothing wrong, right? I've got injured. I fractured my arm. Okay, but I've been sat, so I can't work. I've been told, medically told by a doctor, you can't wear. So I've been sat there panicking, stressing, anxious yep. over whether we'll have enough pieces of paper with a picture of the Queen on it at the end of the yeah. month. And this is what Labour, that's why Labour, this, this mm. is what they want to do, they want to eradicate that fear. So mm. everybody's got like a, a starting point. Yeah. Everybody's got enough food to live. You know, mm. enough education to be able to get out of the mess that you're in or the, the poverty that you're in. Yeah. It's like... Well, As a Tory, is like, well, if you're poor, it's your fault, you're lazy and feckless. Yeah, isn't it? So I'm not going to help you, I'm going to punish you. Yeah. And hopefully that'll make that'll, you book your that'll ideas. That'll learn them. Yeah. That's, seriously, that's their mentality. Uh, oh, yeah. I remember that, what's the quote? Uh, on your bike. Get, what was it? Get on your bike. Yeah. Yep. To go and, yeah. There's people like Ian Duncan Smith saying this. Yeah. Put yourself up for your bootstraps. Claimed for a thirty-nine pound breakfast. Yeah. And he's a multi-millionaire. Yeah. Hey, do you have a thirty-nine pound breakfast? Yeah. You eat it. The sort of place where mm. yeah, the bacon Savoy. sandwich is the uh, thirty-nine quid. Yeah. And that was probably a bacon sandwich and a pot of tea. Probably yeah, just a boiled egg for a yeah. bit of cup yeah. of tea. Fabergé egg. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. Do you all thought you are poor, you fucker? The bitter new Fabergé egg. <laughs> it was really a Lindt chocolate egg. <laughs> oh, yeah. A oh, massive Lindt chocolate egg. Probably a bald eagle egg. Probably a bald eagle egg, yeah. Shatter and cut and stuff. Yeah. Oh, aye, aye, aye. Don't get me started on the fucking Tories. Mm. Oh, yeah. 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 Anyway, yes, let's move on. Winston sees a pretty girl. She's called Julia in the canteen. She's looking at him, he's looking at her. It's a bit of a, whoa, what's going on? That red sash she wears is she's a, a member of the Anti-Sex League. Right. And in this society, there's a war on the orgasm. Willpower over orgasm. Willpower over orgasm. There's an Anti-Sex wow. League. 10,000 women gathered in Victory Square to take chastity vows. Right? You want kids? 
It's mm. uh, procreation only at best, and if not, we're gonna IVF you. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. Marriage down fifty percent. Yeah, marriage is civil partnerships yeah. down fifty percent. Marriage because if you've got personal sort of <coughs> private <coughs> desires, and it's mm. not what the party wants, so you're gonna be aligned yeah. with the party to distraction. Yeah, because your, fa- your loyalty yeah. could be to your family yeah. rather than the party. Yeah. Yeah. Oh dear. Yeah. And uh, the men and women call each other brother and sister. I like that though, it's very Hulk Hogan. No comrades though, no comrades so and so, brother, sister. That also takes a non sexual element out of it, isn't it? Mm. If you're calling the hot girl at work sister, psychologically, unless you're into incest porn, you're not going to want to bang her. That's a good point, I didn't think about that. I get your point, but that would have zero effect on me. I don't give a fuck what I'm calling her. Remember though, you've had that from birth. Okay, it's been drilled into me. So it's been drilled know, into you. They so, do sometimes call them by their surnames. They do sometimes by mm. their surnames. But the proletarians, they get porn. Mm. But wouldn't that just be for... Its... No, I suppose not, because you bang one out, don't you? Uh, I was going to say, I thought it might be more you frustrating. You can't in this world. you got the fucking monitors watching you. Oh, so you, you watch porn and you can't knock one off? No. That's the war against the orgasm. No. Oh, so it's just to test your willpower. Oh, you just bought into it. This is how we do it. I tell you what, don't give me the porn then. Well, the proletariats can. They yeah. haven't got video screens. They're just like policed. And yeah, that's, that, that's what it. I was saying. But your party members, they can't. Well, they can't have. No, they can have kids do IVF. Mm. But even the kids are in uniform. Mm. Boy Scouts, aren't they? Boy, well, the Boy Scouts are like young spies. I, I think they're technically what, called. What do you think of this then, lads? Because I was fucking shocked. Uh, speaking of kids and uniforms, ah. Uh, Youngest, six years old, has just moved up a year, starting now September, six years old, and she wears, now she has to wear a proper button-up shirt and a real tie at six. And now, we had uniforms, didn't we? But they yeah. weren't to that, it was a no. fucking polo shirt yeah. and a fucking jumper to school. Well, the secondary anyway. school was restricted, shirt, tie, blazer. Yeah, yeah oh, but I, I just, I was shocked. I had a jumper. I, I didn't think there should there was, be a uniform. There was but, an do, but do you not uniform. think at junior school that at six years old, getting her to put a fucking button-up shirt and tie on, like, there's something not... Yeah, she looks yeah. cute and smart you in it. You don't let her don't you? I know, that's this what I'm getting what to. Yes, to get used to being subservient. Yes, get used to being subservient. And every morning help her put the tie on that and oh doesn't she look adorable and cute and go yeah she does but there's something to me underneath it right even if it's at the the level of like the school are just like oh we want them to look smart as smart as possible it's like fuck off let her be six mm. because that tie's going to be covered in shit by the time we pick her up but it's like yeah i think there's a subtext to it right get used to it kid because until you're fucking 16 this is your life now yeah. 10 years of every fucking morning Looking at yourself, no, putting this tie 16, on. After it's going to continue. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Mm. Julia passes Winston a note. Uh, in the book, he says, I love you. In this, he just seems to say yes. And then mm. there is a, a location. Right. And then she meets him in the woods. A sexual liaison in June. I, I guess I also put wood fucking. They <laughs> 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 went wood fucking. <laughs> <laughs> How much wood could you fuck with him? <laughs> How much wood would you fuck if a wood fuck could? Yeah. <laughs> I like the line Winston says here. He says, I hate purity. I hate goodness. I don't want virtue to exist anywhere. I want everyone corrupt. And Julie says, well, I ought to suit you then. I'm corrupt to the core. <laughs> oh, yeah, <laughs> baby. That, that would have gave me a raging fucking <laughs> wood straight away. <laughs> Oh, yeah. So as we touched on the the, uh, the party wants to eradicate the orgasm. Oh lord! And so this is like this is why they got the woods and fuck basically because no, there's no video screens out there. If anything gets me through the day. What kind of woods and fucking? <laughs> Not an orgasm every day. <laughs> <laughs> it's good for your prostate as well, mate. There you go. Just uh, me, don't load me life expectancy. Though. Does it? Yeah. Oh man. Well, I'm I'm dead dead by now. Now. We're 15 years by having bollocks. Oh, just by having testicles? Yeah. Well, I should, no, I should be dead it's... by now. <laughs> yeah. I refuse to believe I've went so much I shouldn't have been born. <laughs> <laughs> you put yourself into a time paradox? Wank <laughs> 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 yourself into a time paradox. I'm minus 53 at the moment. <laughs> 
Your mind has been leached. <laughs> the mind is you has got a pipe and slip as a blank up his lungs. So anyway, because you really enjoyed that bit of wood fucking, you rent a room of a shop where you bought the diary from in the proletariat zone. Mm. Seems that everything in the shop's four dollars because the diary was four dollars and all snow bloody was is four dollars. Rent the room is four dollars a week. Mm -hmm. Not as good as Street Finney. Not as good as Street Finney. Street Finney. Four dollars. And they start meeting each other in a rented room. She's got, like, for some reason she's managed to steal, like, top high-end party items, like real coffee, real butter, real bread, fresh-baked bread. Makes you wonder what everyone else is fucking getting, doesn't it? <laughs> now, there you are, some bread from three days ago. I hate stale bread. From my idea of hell, this would. No. Sandwich on stale bread. Oh, but, no. Yeah, and they fall in love. You know? It's a nice little story to that point. Yeah. Even set amongst the hideous propaganda that's being belched at them. See, there's a glim glimmer of hope. Do you see her? Oh, shit, yeah. That's, that's this movie. You've seen her naked. No, that's not the same one, is it? It is, yeah. Yeah. What? That's her character. But it's quite a... If you see her when she's not in character, then she's an attractive woman. Oh, yeah. But, okay. uh, Edna Birch, that blew my fucking mind. Yeah. And it's this was before the internet when I was watching 1984, not on purpose, it was just on telly. Mm -hmm. And I was like, I fucking, oh, I know that face. And then a few days later watching Emmerdale with my uh, parents, like, <gasps> oh, I've seen Edna's muff! <laughs> <laughs> it is an impressive muff. There's a it's lot a very, of hair going on it's there. Very 80s it's muff. It's showing really. that razor blades are not easy to come by. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> For the, oh, that might sound really weird for the listeners. I've just showed a picture to the boys of one of the women featured in the movie. Oh, the, the main character, Suzanne. Um, mm. Oh, hang on. Um, oh, Hamilton. Suzanne Hamilton. Suzanne Hamilton, yes. Suzanne Hamilton. She went on to play um, a famous character in a soap opera who's like a dotty old woman. And, and she was very prude as well. Yes. So the fact that. Was, Sharp was, in the Sharples, in the Emmerdale's and like that. Something like that. She was very prude, yeah. what uh, never did anything ever about seen it. it so no, very no puritanical. Oh, and parents used to watch it at one point. I have seen that woman. Yeah. yeah. As an old woman. It's, she was very, very prudish. She was a church going yeah. woman in the village. Every Sunday she went to church. It's and, just yeah. funny that we've seen her. Yeah, and now she's seen her mother. <laughs> mm. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry. That's my main country. <laughs> <laughs> Muff watch. <laughs> <laughs> Muff watch. I suppose Daily Sport hasn't got that section. <laughs> they will have soon. <laughs> Muff watch. Oh. Um, at this point, Winston, because of his work, he works in the uh, what's it, the Ministry of Information. He, he alters articles. He's a piece by a senior party members called O'Brien, and he says, "I really admire your work, Winston, but you're a bit out of um, your dialect's a little bit out in the tenth edition of Newspeak now, mm. which is the the language that this party likes people to use." So come round, I've got a 10th edition, mm. come round and, and you can borrow it. You know, I like your writing, I'm going to help you out. Even though he hates the party, mm. and he defies them, he's also thinking, well he can't refuse, but at the same time, well if I'm in the upper party, and I'm in the inner party, if I get, if I get noticed, perks. I get more perks, I get a better life. That's it. Mm. So I can still hate it and be and try and climb the ladder, yeah. Is, you know, you, like, like my job. Like anybody. Well, like just anyone with an office job or yeah. anything with it. Do you know, I sometimes think, sometimes I think, oh, it's shit that there's no ladder in my, there's literally nowhere to go in my job. But then other times I think, I think that's a good thing because I don't spend my time thinking about it. Do you know what I mean? Like, yeah. oh, I'd be better off if I could just get that. There's nowhere. Yeah, like, it's it's it literally a dead made. end job. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, but the more you want, you know, yeah, you get it. it, then you want more. Yeah. You want more. Yeah. You, spend, you spend more, you want more. A little used to do it, but a little would do it, so a little got more. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, welcome to the jungle! <laughs> yeah. And so, as I mentioned, the city suffers periodic bombing. Mm. This is why everything looks a shit old. Or does it? Or does it? I think it's a false flag by the party. It would make sense. Oh, maybe Sharma. it's not, and it's even, it literally is the risk of a fucking bomb falling on you on yeah. top of all the other shit. That's it. Now, at this point, the Oceana is at war with East Asia and allied with Eurasia. Oceana has always been at war with East Asia and allied with Eurasia. Mm. Yeah, Eurasia, not the band. Ooh, Savannah song. Is that Eurasia? No, I don't know. Ooh, something. Oh, there we go. Yeah, that's, I don't know. that's Eurasia, yeah. definitely. 
Uh, and um, give a little respect. Oh, I like that song. I yeah. really like that song, actually. Um, and and when she says, a lie becomes a truth and then becomes a lie again. Mm. Because Oceana hasn't been at war with East Asia. She's been at war with Eurasia. Yeah. And allied with East Asia. And that's always happened. Mm. Despite the fact that they're showing, that, oh yeah, we broke them on this front. And remember, they're always winning. Mm. <laughs> they're never losing, they're always yeah. winning. Doesn't matter though, does it? Doesn't no, matter it doesn't. the fighting, that's not the point. It's the fact that it goes on forever. That's yeah. it. Yeah, a little bit of background here where he has a a dream about his mother and sister vanishing. Lots of rats, that's gonna be important later on. Yeah. Never can't find out with his parents or eat his mum and sister are eaten by rats. Mm. It's a possibility. Yeah, and he goes it's... and visits O'Brien mm. to get this dictionary. And he finds out that the senior members of the party, the inner members of the party, they can turn off the video screen. That's a privilege they get. Mm. So they can't be watched all the time. Mm. So what are they up to? Well, that's it. He then proceeds to tell Winston the resistance is real. Mm. The Goldstein, this, this guy is real. The idea, It's not a cell. It's not an organised resistance. But the resistance is the idea. As V said, ideas mm. are bulletproof. Yeah. Oh, yes. I, like I read that on my arm every day. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's the idea, but the, they're, they're held together by this idea. Now, he takes his dictionary home, mm. and he realises the pages are, are rather thick. Yeah. You'll be thinking, well, is this like, for him, he's like, well, is this is like luxury paper, because you know, he, all the books he's ever read, yeah, or right. held in his hand, or the paper mm. is thin. He takes a, a letter up, or a knife, and he. And in between the pages are the ideas of Goldstein and the revolutionaries. Yeah. Telling them that the war is meant to be forever. It's never meant to be won. Mm. It, it keeps the structure of society intact. It's you basically, if your mind is focused on, and, and all through the film, all <coughs> the, in the Excuse background, me. it's like threads in a way, you can see where mm. threads got the idea, you have all those yeah. news articles running through the background of the film. Mm. It's exactly the same with this. Oh, 40,000 tanks used this month, yeah. 60,000 rifles, 120,000 rocket repelled grenades. Yeah, and it's, it's all a really the way good, the film. Um, it's that propaganda a being, yeah. being dirge. It's a dirge yeah. of information being thrown at them, encouraging them only to think yeah. about that yeah. rather than anything else. It is a story, um, a, a quite useful storytelling technique as well, use news report as a narrative voice. In your of story, course. if you see what I mean, they can move the story on without it breaking the. Uh, yeah, out in the background. Yeah. Uh, the thing that's popping to my head now, I've yeah. just realised there's some fucking. Uh, Frank Miller must have definitely been inspired by 1984. I've never thought about this before, but you know, The Dark Knight Returns? Yeah. Well, again, it uses the news bulletins spread out mm. to tell the story, but also, and it must be a common idea in dystopian things, I guess, then. Uh, there's the breakdown of language as well in The Dark Knight Returns. The youths on the street are all using this new oh. sort of. Like, Fucking spacker talk, like whatever, but you know, it's like <laughs> cutty cutty knife knife. It's all like it's like that's not what they say, that's not in the script, but you get what I mean. And I'm sure it's been in other things as well. It's like, like the living dead, mm. so it's kind of a, a news report, a solid, mm. uh, but that breakdown of language thing. So, news report oh, thing, that's just Robocop, Starship yeah. Troopers, yeah, yeah. Is it yeah. must be a, dy a trope of dystopian fantasy, then it, it's because it, I suppose once when language breaking down. Language is such an expressive. That's it. The nuance. more expressive your language is, the more people can complain about yeah. you. If you limit the language, because also the control is. If the best you've got to say mm. something's great is double plus good, yeah, then that doesn't really have any emotion behind it. Yeah. You're like, oh, did you see that film? It was fucking amazing. It was bro. Oh, yeah. I, I, I mean, hooked. If you're just going double plus good, yeah. it's not the same, isn't it? And it is control and like and. Categorise a bit. Do you know somebody tried to compliment me once? But like when I used to work the markets at the festival, I've been talking to this photographer all weekend. Not in that kind of. I had my girlfriend with me, but we just. She ended up just staying on our store for a couple of days and like partying with us. And like, so I was really talking with her, a deep conversation. And she looked at me and she went, like, "Yeah, you've got a really good vocabulary." <laughs> the subtext was. You know, for a fucking drunken market trading scally working class boy, you do words good. You yeah. know what I mean? It's like patronising. Uh, it's kind of yeah. You know, I, I paid attention at school a little bit. I read. You know, white 
let me out my box. <laughs> like, mm-hmm. I don't know where I was going, but this like language breaking down basically, and like yeah. and using language because in our they don't really have this in America as much. Well, they don't have it in America that we have in England. Is the second you open your mouth, someone's making judgments about what class you are. Yep. You know what I mean? Yes. You know, and it's not just that; it is accent, vocabulary, instantly making judgments about your yeah. social standing, your education, uh, and how they should be treating you. Of course. Um, and I suppose if you can uh, make it so that one group below you all use this broken down, simpleton course, version, yeah. but you lot above them, you're not speaking like that, are you? I remember the upper classes in this country mm. used to speak French. Yeah, and they want to speak like the Queen. Yeah. Now they speak, obviously, they don't even receive mm. pronunciation when the English became right. the official. Which is language. a fucking, for any international listeners, is a made up accent. It's not, it only exists because they fucking made it up. Right? Yeah, it's, you want to hear receive pronunciation, listen to 1940s, uh, 1950s. Listen to BBC 19, World Service. Listen to uh, World Service. Listen to 1940s, 1950s newsreels, you'll hear receive mm. pronunciation. That is not how we speak. But it's just imagination. Uh, you know, on a, whose line is it anyway? Where they like they do that sort of thing, where they're like, or, no, uh, mop the week or something like that, where they're like, you've got to go up to the microphone and it, there's like a, a subject, yeah. that you, and it was like something you would never hear on the radio. And this girl, this female comedian, uh, she had like a northern accent. She's like, hello, I'm on Radio Four with a regional accent. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I, I laughed my bollocks off, Alex. I listened to a lot of Radio Four. I was like, you fucking really don't. Every presenter has the same. Yeah. Homogenised. Hello, I'm a BBC Four presenter, and I'm talking like this. Yeah, but it's not real. Even um, one of my favourite presenters, Howard Hughes, on the Unexplained mm. podcast. One of my favourite presenters for for podcasts. Uh, he's a scouser, mm. but he's because he was trained as a journalist. Uh, he's he lost. The, he can sort of uh, kind of catch it a little bit, but my favourite. If you're a Brit, you can catch uh, it. If not, he's a very standard English accent. They are always my favourite fucking people on earth. Are uh, very well educated, highly intelligent, working class people who've still got an accent. Yeah. I, I, there's just something comforting about it. <laughs> something like, oh, well, listen to this guy because he remembers what it was like to have to share the bathwater. Like, yeah. Do you know what I mean? Like, but he, he went to uni, he got fucking educated. Like, yeah, and they were Brian Cox, he's like Northern Yeah, I like him. I yeah. listen to him. Yeah. And I like he's, he's a nice personality. He's not arrogant like fucking mm. Neil deGrasse Tyson. Brian's got a much more lovely approach. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> so we go back to the film. After several weeks of fucking in this rented room, the, the, the guy said, Oh, it's a great bed that if you get the bed bugs out of it, so they're probably getting bitter as fuck. I hope they got the bed bugs out of it first. They get rumbled. Oh no. And it turns out the guy who owned the shop mm. was a spy for the thought police. Oh dear. The thought police, the again, thought another police. thing that's in common usage. Oh, can I go back to the book a second? We forgot something. Yep. Because you mentioned that the book was in two parts, wasn't it? Yeah, it was. A, you, and the other book was The Theory and Practice of Oligarchical Collectivism. Right. Which basically, that's something I never read. Which oh, basically right. spells out the, how they control you, isn't it? Mm. Oligarch. I still don't know what that means. Oligarchical Collectivism. I know. An oligarchy is. He's the guy that owns Chelsea. It's a small which. group of wealthy people mm. that, that basically own a country. Right. Which is what we have. Yeah. Especially America. America is massively an oligarchy. Mm. We have the media, as you said, our first six companies own our media. Yeah. Mm. So and the US. And, and so US is worse. I think. You know, those six people control everything we're fed. I shouldn't be up here. <laughs> Sorry. Don't. <laughs> uh, yeah, so Did you they, see the meme of it's where somebody? Green screen on top of a building that I shared. No, I didn't it's see Very that. silly, but it's literally someone's just put her on top of a building. I shouldn't be up here. It's fucking hilarious, but people don't see it that way. Uh, I, I will agree with you that that speech she gave, while I've no doubt she believed every single word, mm. she was coached to get oh, yeah. angry at the appropriate time. Mm. She had a, a, a script prompter. A, but at the same time, she was saying everything that needed to be said. GCSE drama grade C plus. Oh the, well, the performance wasn't amazing, but she's sixteen. You know, I mean, come on, bro. I got an A GCSE. I was sixteen. <laughs> <laughs> well, Just well, saying, I'm better than Greta Thunberg. Anyway, well, when you deliver a speech yeah. to the UN, 
<laughs> what if they'd let me? <laughs> well, stop sending them threatening messages. <laughs> 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 Imagine my speech. Oh God! Stop sending a threatening message on Twitter, and they might do that. <laughs> oh, so yeah, they get rumbled. Turns out there was a video screen in the room. Oh. After all, the the, the guy who rented them is remember the, the spy for the thought police. They were surrounded. Julie's taken first, and they are incarcerated in the ironically named Ministry of Love. Mm. Yeah, yeah, everything's been switched up. Yeah. So the the Ministry of Peace is... Is the Ministry of War, War yeah. yeah. Yep. We see his co-worker, I don't know, Mike Rapsy Nesbitt. Turns mm. out he's a thought criminal. He didn't, even, he didn't even know it. Didn't even know it. They just broke he's him. He's like, my daughter dubbed me in. Yeah, and mm. that's, that's what Nazi Germany wanted. That's, mm, you know, yeah. The kids are in Hitler Youth uniforms. If you said, like, mm. oh, that hey, is a little prick, isn't he? And the kids overheard you. Mm. You're dobbed into the Gestapo and off you go to the concentration camp. Mm. <laughs> You know, that's what this level of... It's all right for us. We're, we're 35, 36, yeah, 37. They try and give this to us, and we're going to be the proles. Mm. But our kids are going to be the ones who grow up with it. Mm. And they may not take it as much, because we're telling them otherwise as well, but they, they play the game enough. Mm. And with their kids, we'll be fully indoctrinated into this. Oh, yeah. Because they've had half of it themselves. That's if they can still have kids. Well, the proles can. No, oh, I'm on about in real life. If, like, oh. this generation below us, if, like, they haven't all chanted themselves out of childbirth. <laughs> Possibly. Who knows? <laughs> I wouldn't like to say. No one's just... A man, no of, man and a woman in the room. Each, neither of them know what they identify. We, I don't know. Do you put it in my bum or you do you? We, put it, I don't know how it works. When we, when we were teenagers, it was gay, straight, and bi, and there was there won't be any yeah. porn left. <laughs> It'll just be a nightmare. They won't know where to stick it. What's a pan, what's pansexualism? I don't know. I genuinely no, I think that that be your fuck anything that moves. <laughs> yeah, right. Well, okay, fair enough. But um, don't, anyway, before you're about to say I'm a pansexual, it does mean no. I, I wasn't going to say it because I don't Good. want to fuck a dude. Yeah, but not I'm just cisgendered. Dudes. I'm sorry. I'm not just dude. Uh, do not bend to them, Ben. Do not refer to yourself <laughs> as cisgendered. You're straight. All right then, whatever. Fuck it, we might as well start double pussy good good news, yeah, cisgendered. <laughs> fuck off, fuck them all. Anyway, back to the movie. What is them? I'm still look so you have. very sober. There's three more to go. Touch of a nerve this movie with me. Out of how many? Uh, I had one before I came. I'm not that pissed. I'm fine. Mm, okay, I am. These are just my honest <laughs> opinions, you know. Fair Fuck the woke. Uh, yeah, so um, is the guy who's, um, who was big in confession, he's taken to room 101. Again. Before he goes, he turns to Winston and points at him. This guy who spent lunch times with and mm. says, no, take him. He's a thought criminal. <laughs> I'm not. And then Winston gets a sort of full, well, full metal jacket treatment where his yeah. hair's cut off and mm. he's put into the nondescript coverall again and then um, he's tortured on the rack. Yeah. yeah. All because he busted a nut. Yeah, pretty much. Yeah. And, and the fact he just, they found his diary at this well, point, yeah. so they know what he's thinking. And, and O'Brien's is the one conducting. He laid the trap for him, didn't mm. he? Yeah. He he knew he'd read that. Yeah. He knew he'd tell it to Julia. He knows that he's a dangerous thought criminal. But the party, the authorities, the Gestapo, if you will, are just they're watching yeah. everybody. He says, "Oh, he got to you too." And he goes, "They got to me a long time ago." Yeah. Mm. You know, they've converted him already. He's yeah. On theirs now. He belongs to them. And he, and he br they break. They break Winston, they? yeah, with the, the rack, and he makes him. He says, Well, tell me what you remember. And he says, Well, you know, Oceana's at war with East Asia. No, no, that's a hallucination. Mm. Oceana's at war with heavily tightly, we're at war with. Yeah. <coughs> How many fingers I'm holding up? Yeah, he holds four fingers up. He says, How many? He goes, Four. No, increase it. Mm. By the way, this dial goes from zero to 100, you're on 50. Yeah. You're like, Oh. He, you know, his reality is in the human mind. It's not the individual, but we're all part of the party. It's a collective. 
The party says there's five fingers. The party says five fingers. There's five fingers. The party says there's four fingers. There's four fingers. The party says there's three fingers. There's three fingers. You believe what the party tells it you. It was the highest attending inauguration, both in person <laughs> and watched around the world since inaugurations began. That's not turned to fact. <laughs> And they make you look big. The parallels are scary, and they make yeah. they make <laughs> you look big, brother. And then they mm. kill you. Yeah. And that's the well. Yeah. We'll get to that at the end of the film. Yeah, you know, obedience is not enough. It's not power. It's it's means that's an end. It's not enough that you you're obedient. You have to love the party. Yeah. yeah. There's no loyalty, but loyalty the party. There's no love, but love for Big Brother. And he says, O'Brien says, if you want a vision of the future. Imagine a boot stamping on a human face forever. Oh. It's like WrestleMania. Yeah. Perpetual WrestleMania. And then you find out that Goldstein, the arts trader, isn't actually real, and O'Brien helped write part of it. And he says, well, no one writes everything. We, we collect things now. We're collective. Hang on, no, that is but pretty fucked up that you could say such a deep line, a dark line like that to me. Imagine a boot on a human face forever. And I wasn't trying to be comedic for effect. Wrestling popped into my brain. The first, I sat there and thought about the saying, and wrestling popped in my brain. <laughs> I am a fucking silly individual who doesn't understand the severity of the now, situation that I am in. Kept in the corner. Yeah, right. forever. Uh, Brett Hart used to do that, didn't mm. that one of his favourite things was the stamp in the corner. One, mm. two, three. Yeah. Right. What was well, a three count, isn't it? I got till five, ref! Oh yeah, five, so it's a five count. Right. But he's not doing that for a five count. He's, he's got you in the corner, stamping on your face forever. Yeah, but I'm bleak getting paid. Bleak gets, I'm, I'm getting paid to be stamped on, aren't I? You'd be no, able to spend any other money because you're getting stamped on forever. Yeah. <laughs> well. It's got to be one of the most bleakest lines into yeah. a film and yeah. history. Which is I why don't. I found this I just film. I hate myself for thinking of wrestling. I'd have rather <laughs> watch Threads again <laughs> than sit through this in my current state, yeah, honestly. Well, it's a great film, though. What a I mean, yes, it is. It's a fantastic film. It, it's, but I'm just sat there thinking, oh, my fucking God. I've got any fucking notes on this. <laughs> it was your idea. Don't blame me. You said it was, but I can't remember. It was definitely your idea, yeah. mate. <laughs> Winston's this fucked at this point physically that O'Brien reaches into his mouth and pulls out his fucking tooth. Shit. He's that malnourished oh, no. and tortured that he can just you shouldn't pop be a able tooth to do that. his hand. <laughs> it's like, I mean, it's like, what have you degraded me to? Or yeah, something? He's like, he's you just, do it to yourself, Winston. Yeah, he goes, well, accept. Mm. You want to accept. And then he gets taken to room 101. Why? Because he must love Big Brother. Uh, what is What is in room 101? Well, it's the worst thing in the world for you personally. Yeah. And especially for Winston, he's got that diary. They know his fears, his hopes. It's unendurable, is what he says. It's unendurable. And then he gives him a little bit of a spiel. He says, the rats in the proletarian areas will attack babies and the sick and they'll strip it down to the bone. In four hours, was it? Yeah, something like that. I think even quicker wow. than the babies. So they fit a cage onto Winston's head. <laughs> And there were two doors, and when both are released, the only way for the rats to get out is to eat their way through Winston's face. Sometimes they go for the eyes, sometimes they'll bore through the cheeks. You ever seen a rat leap of prey? Is what he says. Mm. No. That is, I am telling you everything at this point, oh. and I will say to you whatever you want me to fucking say, yeah. because there's no way I'm dying with rats eating my face. <laughs> yeah. Right? I me, is it in Robocop 2 where he puts a rat on his stomach, then a bucket, a metal bucket on mm. top of the rat, and then starts to heat up the that bucket? That is an old is medieval Robocop style of torture, yeah. yes. So they do it in Game of Thrones as well. Yes, yeah, so they do the yeah. bucket so it has no choice but to start mm. burrowing through you. Yeah. Yeah. And they make yeah. the kid, the drug but, dealer kid, watch it. But, right, difference between yeah. your stomach <laughs> and your face. Yeah, you can see it. Right? And Winston screams, do it to Julia, not to me. Do it to Julia, not to me. And at that point, mm. they know that they've broken him. Yeah. Yeah. Because his only loyalty was the woman he loved. Yeah. Yeah. 
I got to admit, really? at that point, I'd throw my partner under the bus as well. Just oh. being honest. You know what? Fuck it. Me too. <laughs> there's no way rats are eating my face. Plus, he yeah. has just been tortured yeah, for fucking... Yeah, been tortured for weeks. He doesn't yeah. know how long he's been there and yeah, they don't lost tell him. all sense of fucking yeah. reality and... He's just... I mean, he's literally sat there in his cell. What's it called? He's sensory looking at the floor. deprivation. Ministry of Love. No, it's, it, when you do it, like yeah, sensory yeah. deprivation where someone's got no idea of what time of oh, day yeah. it is. Well, it's just or, being a... a yeah. you, know, you, you If you can control... Mm. We, we measure our, our hours by day and night. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And if you're in a lit cell, 24-7, mm. you just lose time. Or a dark time. cell, yeah. isn't no it? Idea. Yeah. Or a dark cell, whatever. Yeah. And he's just sat in the cell, and at, what, at some point he, he does slump down, and uh, John Elliott Winston slumps down. Mm. And the video screen immediately comes on. Winston you know, Smith, oh. W, number, mm. whatever. Put your head up. Mm. And it, oh, I'm awake again. Cool. So it's it's sleep deprivation. Yeah. It's torture as well, you know, on the mm. rack. And then you're having rats mm. saying, oh, we're going to, your worst fear is being eaten by rats. These rats are going to eat your face. Mm. Yeah, I'd be gra- I'd be grassing my partner in as well. I'd be grassing anyone they wanted me to. Yeah, in. I think anybody and who hasn't got fucking some sort of training. Yeah, everybody, no, I don't care if you've got mm. training. Everybody breaks under torture. Yeah. I mean, well, that's why they I say it's well, useless, isn't it? Don't yeah. they? Because you'll start like you can, they want, yeah. you yeah. can torture me now and ask me like uh, who killed the girl in the thing over there. And, I'm just gonna start like really, at the, at Frank, Johnny, uh, Billy, big bloke, six foot two. I don't fucking know what you want. Eventually, uh, it was me. Well, yeah, I suppose yeah, they're, they're having none of that. Like, all right, all right, all right. If you will stop pulling out my fingernails, and if you yeah. will reattach my genitals before I bleed out, yeah, it was me. Oh no, you don't bleed out. No, no, no. They just inflict as much pain no, I was, as possible. Yeah. yeah. Maybe yeah, the Spanish Inquisition. Hmm. Yes, yeah. I mean, you know, oh, fucking hell, I mean, uh, the Japanese in World War II, they drive bamboo splinters under your fingernails. Torture me all you want. I don't know who did. Torture you. It's a good idea. Yeah, I like that. I like that. <laughs> Starts cutting, is it? Yeah. Stuck in the middle with, with you. you. I can't hear that song now uh, without visualising that scene. Uh, I love that track. Oh, oh yeah. <laughs> Is it Casino where they put that guy's head in the vine? That's yeah, it. that's yeah, the one. Yeah, yeah. Oh, that's Popped your rough. fucking eyeball out of your head. <laughs> oh. Like, you didn't give me that name. The second... And it, I, I just <laughs> track... Joe I would, Pesci. And, yeah. <laughs> but nowadays we don't have torture. We have an in- enhanced mm. interrogation. Water, apparently waterboarding mm. is one of the worst things you can ever fucking have. Apparently, uh, yeah. I mean, I'd crack under it because the, the fear of droning mm. for me is like a, it's a biggie. So if you start stimulating yeah. that, stim- then I'm 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 done. I'm telling you. Yeah, new speak again, isn't it? Mm. Enhanced interrogation. Yeah. Oh, this I, examples of that are like at, at the sort of malign level. You have like a friend of mine once told me he was um, yeah I'm a manager at the factory. Oh yeah, I'm in charge of my own department and stuff. Oh yeah. I mean, like, I'm the waste management. Oh, fuck, what was the second, third word? But it's waste management operative, something like that. <laughs> Waste man, you empty the bins. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. You empty the bins though, though. Like. And you're the bin man. There's no shame in that. It's fun, but why? Is, why are they giving you this fucking flouncy fucking patronising so type of people? To, if you just put, you know, bin man, you know, no one's gonna apply. It's hilarious, though. Uh, yeah. Uh, executive officer of waste like management. War. You empty the fucking. Sorry. It's like in war, the death mm. of innocent people is collateral damage. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah, basically, after that sort of um, do it to Julia, not me, they know they broke him. And they know that really his love is for Big Brother. And they, it cuts to Winston in a cafe. He's playing chess. You assume this game's been going on for a little bit. Yeah. There's no emotion in their meeting, is there? No. Nope. There's just no emotion. They're both brainwashed into obedience and they both admit that they crapped under the torture. And they also both know they're in a death sentence. O'Brien says to him, hey, we're not going to shoot you now. Mm. Shoot you later on. Mm. Why not now? And his confession is broadcast. He admits to anything they want because this is what happens when you're under torture. 
Him is going down to the proletarian area to get syphilis to spread amongst party members. Yeah. Here, Mr. Guarding rocket bombs using radio encrypted transmissions. Here, Mr. Poisoning the water supply. Here, Mr. Destroying machinery. He now loves me, brother. He's a good party member. He, he says to Julio, I'm concerned about the African front. If only there was some way we could outflank them. And then what happens? <laughs> Mm. The Eurasian force, the, the, the you know the Eurasian, uh, so the Oceania forces outflank the enemy and there's a glorious mm. victory. And he starts weeping, doesn't he? He starts crying. He's, because he's got so happy. Yeah. Because this could have uh, led to an invasion of Oceania territory for the first time. And he's a good party member. And of course he is. but he's gonna get shot at some point. He knows that unless he behaves. Mm. But he loves the party. But now. he loves the party now. Oh, does he? Or is he just? Is he still just towing the line? I think he... he, you, know, he got, you know, he's got... This is his last chance, doesn't well, it? Well, there's that as well, isn't there? You know, it's well, like, I think he broke him and... I think he broke him because I think everyone breaks into torture. I think that's the point of the... The book, really, I guess, is that even... This guy who was well-meaning... Had every reason to hate them. It don't take much. Nope when they're all powerful in that way, when they control everything you access. Yeah. What are you going to do? I think they could break anybody and everybody. I think, um... And it I relies, think, and it's dependent there upon... There is only one bit of hope in the story, mm. is that it, they do break him, but mm. it takes a lot to break him eventually. Yeah. And imagine doing that for every single person. Yeah. So, a lot is, of effort like, and work. so is mm. Room 101 the last resort? Or are there several Room 101s? I don't know. That's the thing, I mean, there's every ministry, I mean, there's probably a Ministry of Love office in every major city. Yeah, there yeah. must be. But, you know. So is there a Room 101? As dark as it is, can their hold last like that forever? Well, maybe if they... Well, they can be good with their Over generations. Every successive are... generation gets stronger. Yeah, of course, yeah. So, just shows you, mate, that how easily manipulated we are we're so naive as a species well we you, you can't see the majority of people don't have a clue do they what's really going on no i was told about this it, i was again getting myself in trouble by just taking the piss out of the current situation and all that and the, my friend who asked me why it was um why i was choosing to die on this hill or whatever and then i posted him a picture of that the kid in the maga hat mm. And I was like, yeah, I remember when the left were piling in on this guy, they're the same people now claiming moral superiority because Trump was sarcastic to a, a girl of the same age. I was like, and again with that, that politician who I read out earlier who was on one tweet saying that calling for public disorder is a horrific thing to do and then a couple of years later is tweeting, I'll be on the streets with you. Yeah. That like nobody's ideology... Your average sort of working person who doesn't have time to sit and deeply think and, and write studies and read libraries worth of yep. books. Your average person's ideology doesn't stand up to much scrutiny, nope. myself nope. included. Yeah, I mean, right? all of us in cause. It's, there, really it's so know. easy for them, it's there. The news mm. presents it to them, yeah. wraps it up into a nice little, little package and says, right, mm. there's the news. And there's my opinion. Digest that, mm -hmm. yeah. 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 That's it. And then when someone tries to unpack it with you, you're like, well, why do you think that? Yeah. And you're like, mm -hmm. yeah. Well, well is it? You because... see a lot of people yeah. do mental gymnastics yeah, yeah. crazy ideas well, look at that just guy. to reinforce that one belief. Look at that guy we spoke with the other week, right? Earth is supply of in you're, I'm diabetic, I rely on the supply of insulin. So what if Brexit mm, yeah. makes sure insulin supply? It'll be worth it, but you'll die. Yeah, it'll be worth it. Okay. What? Yeah. <laughs> I was watching a Channel 4 News yesterday. There's this woman, yeah. fisherman, seafood, and she exported it to Spain. And she said, I spent £40,000 preparing for, new, for no deal Brexit. Mm. And I voted leave. And the, the presenter said, Is it worth it? She says, Yes. She says, How can it be worth it? She says, Well, mm. it's a sacrifice I'm willing to make for the, for the good of the country in the long term. <laughs> You idiot! You just ruined your family's future, destroyed your own she business. She has genuine. She genuinely mm. believes. She's bought that belief off Boris mm. or whatever, and yeah. thought, oh, "That's my belief now." Brexit is the only thing. So, hell, come hell or high water, mm. even if it affects me, mm. it's a good. It's the good of the country. Yeah, well, yeah. my dad's neighbour. He's a. He's a, He's recently had a quadruple heart bypass. He's voting Brexit party. He's voting for a man that's openly decried the NHS and wants to get rid of it. 
Yeah. I'll never forget. Well, fuck you... them Muslims. I'll never forget. How can you? Yeah. You just your life saved. Oh man. I'll never forget when austerity began. Mm. And then when they said, oh, we've got to tighten our belts now. Yeah. yeah. Someone on Facebook said, oh, it's time to tighten our belts. Word for word, practically, what mm. what George Osborne <laughs> said. Like, mm. Are you fucking buying a hook, line and sink? Are you standing there in front of bankers with gold fucking goblets and chains mm. around his neck? Say, we need to tighten our belts as a country. Fucking start with it yourself, you fucking hypocritical cunt. Order! Order! <laughs> That's the most Order. raging I've heard, Mike. <laughs> It's fucking bang on. That's this why. This why I've taken the position of I think I think we're called on the internet shit posters. Yeah. Who like haven't got an ideological sort of argument that makes any fucking sense or stands up to any scrutiny. Doesn't really enjoy what anyone's saying. So you just sort of stand attached, detached from any of it, just ripping it. And then I, I was, people will tell yeah. me that that's a weak position for me to be in, personally, but I think for my mental health, it's the only fucking Why do position you have to pick I can sides? take. I know I can't. I don't pick sides on everything. Yeah, no, you should. You're right. I think you're, you've got the right sort of approach to it because you don't get sucked into all the right. You don't identify with the woke fucking idiots, and you, you know, but you're definitely the more, like a pure liberal. Like a He's more liberal than Gandhi, apparently, yeah, according to well, fucking. Facebook test. That's the but Mike still believes in true liberalism of like, let the cunts say their cunty things. They've got a right yeah, to because yeah. they're humans. We just, we'll just ignore them. You know yeah, what I mean? Just ignore them. You, if, if you really feel so bad about it, well, argue yeah, back. Well, yeah, that's the That's the whole point. It's but you, free you don't speech. want them wiped out of existence and no. lose their ability to speak. Unless they're saying... Well, like, you're not the new left, though. You're just a plain speech. old-fashioned fascist. You're not doing it under the guise of wokeism. Like, if you dyed your hair purple and said, yeah, I don't know if I was a girl now, and like, you know, you could get away, with, they're getting away with fascism under a different guise. And, and I think that some ideas, such as fascism, are too dangerous to the human species. Mm. I think it's about, I think we need to look higher. I don't think it's about liberal, democrat, <coughs> republican, Tory. I'm in it for the species. You're not yeah, but yeah. you say that. So with the Nazis, that's isn't it for the species. No, because they I want, want the pure I don't, no, I don't want to. I don't want. I'm not interested in purity. I'm not interested in racial superiority. I'm not a racist. I'm not a homophobe. I don't give a shit what people do. But you ditch this tribalism and move forward with the species. And if that involves cutting some dangerous ideas, then I'm prepared to do it. Yeah, but people. Where does that put me on the political spectrum? People are brainwashed, don't they? That's the problem. But I also think with the right education, and I'm not saying brainwashing, I'm just saying a scientific, open, open education, I don't think people would have right-wing of ideas. Course. That's the key. That's the key. Or religious ideas. And that's what I, well, I would want. So where does that put me on the political spectrum? Well... Still pretty fascist, Far right, I think. Yeah. <laughs> but no, it isn't, because I want a left-wing yeah, society. Yeah, but you don't want anyone who disagrees with yeah. you, innit? Everyone has to think your way, or society won't move forward. I'm thinking of a, of a decent society where everyone's equal. Decent in your Free speech idea. everybody or nobody. Yeah, I'm, yeah. I'm with Mike on that one. I, but this I, is why certain, I, keep getting, I also think that certain ideas are too dangerous. I don't know if I... No. I keep getting called alt-right and a Nazi by strangers who don't actually know who I am, because I'm not if you stop them, If you stop them talking, only festers underground. Yeah. Well, I'm not using a real profile on Twitter. They don't know who I am. They can't see my... But it's just by me basically attacking woke people. The assumption is you outright Nazi and all that. I'm like these people don't got fucking clue. Like I, like I could be. It's so much more fucking complex than just like everyone's obsessed with this. That's why I never attack. But look, I, want, I want free healthcare. I, I want free education. Please. I want you know equal rights for everybody. But at the same time, I admit there are some ideas in the human political mind. They're probably a little bit too fucking extreme. No, you've got to be, be able to, and you've got to then, be, you've got to be able to debate them ideas. Yeah, but then you're the arbiter of what but ideas with a, with, are with a, yeah, a more open them. education. People wouldn't fall to that. Well, exactly. I well, don't know if you can say that because it's be less, I, believe. I think, I think yeah, less. I think you could sort of educate religion out, but then there would there would be an up there would be a a sort of resistance against that. Then I think no, maybe not a big one, but some people will I think always hold on. Yeah. Uh, if they do it in please. private, mm. right, I don't have an issue. Yeah, but then you're it's like, when it comes into the open, and then you're like, what's his name? Well, then, then they're like, what's his name writing in his diary? Aren't yeah. they? 
You know, yeah. if you happen to catch him, like, was that fucking boy we were reading, you cunt? Right. Yeah. Fucking yeah, so yeah, good. Right, yeah. Either way, yeah, they, 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 they fail. With I think you issue. mean well. I, I see what you're saying. And we joke about f- being fascists and racist. No, we, we are fucking joking. We're three pretty fucking liberal dudes who treat people with respect. Take people as yeah, they come. Take anyone. If but, you treat me all right, I'll treat you all right. Yeah. Basically, don't care what, what you do, what you are. This is why I care. keep getting called outright, is because I'm being forced by the left to defend not their position politically mm. but their right to fucking have it do you know yeah. what I mean it's like what, how am I getting lumped in and called a fucking Nazi along with all this I'm just telling you to stop telling him that he hasn't got a right to fucking speak like yeah oh, yeah, 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 yeah. but then you look at his freedom of speech actually a fucking a thing that should be allowed I think you should be allowed to say anything you want as a Offensive as you want, you should also be free to deal with the consequences. See, is, yeah, so if you want it. to go on TV and drop n bombs and all yeah. that, yep, you're allowed to. You're also allowed to walk out on the street then and answer to all the angry yeah. people of colour who are going to want to speak think, to you. Yeah. Thing is hate hate crimes, mm. or, uh, encouraging violence, yeah. hate crimes are weird, but basically I think inciting violence, violence and because of race. Yeah. Or, or if you go there and say every brown person is a terrorist, then you should be fucking called out for that. Big also, time. like Boris, Boris fucking Johnson saying, uh, calling Muslim women letterboxes. Yeah. And, uh, now listen, full fucking disclosure. I'll make a. Uh, I don't mind admitting. He's got his right. I, he's got no, a right to say that. No, he has on. got a right. Yes, yes, but well, he doesn't have a. He also has a right for me to think that he's a cunt mm. for saying it. But I no, think where it's different with him. To be that's what I'm trying to get. I have thought things to myself. I'm not going to lie. When I've been out and about and been and seeing the Muslim lady in the thing, the thing I usually think to myself and make myself chuckle is, oh, she looks like a ninja, okay? Not a letterbox, a ninja. But I'd never go and say it to her or, like, say it out loud. It's just a little chuckle I have with myself, like, oh, there's the ninjas. I'm not the Prime Minister, like, if if I had, like, a school of people listening to me and I was doing a speech to, like, like a few thousand young people, I wouldn't be like, sometimes when I'm walking through... <laughs> <laughs> oh, I think you'll they're love Muslim this. women. You'll, you'll love this, this kids. Especially you, all the muzzy girls down there. Uh, some, <laughs> the muzzy girls. Sometimes I think to myself, don't they look like ninjas? <laughs> anyway, good luck getting on with each other, guys. But I absolutely take Mike's point that he has got a right to think and say that. He's also got a right, yeah, for like that dude to stand up and shame him, the seat yeah. guy in in, uh, in Parliament. But it's water. Like I you say, you've got to deal with the consequences. But if, if some guy want, comes out, with it. Yeah. but if some guy comes out and says, I think we should lock ex people into camps and do away with them then you've got a right to have his idea squashed and called and yeah anyone that's think, hate isn't it yeah. that's ins- also that's murder and breaking the look yeah but then then but I, I guess not, every, not all those camps started as no, extermination well, they were well, labour camps well Guantanamo or is highly camps. illegal isn't that's it? what the Nazis wanted them to believe yeah and that's how you, you spin it to the public and therefore we come full circle back to the media where the government can do exactly what it wants as long as it spins it the right way. Mm. All I'm going to say is that 1984 was a book of fiction. It wasn't a blueprint. Mm, but It seems to be. It's becoming one. Yeah. It's, do you think I'm George was there, just sat there thinking, what is it? He must have just sat there and gone, the way things are going right now, he must have seen something happening in, what year was it, 40... It was communism, wasn't it? So, and he's thought to himself... Well, was it communism, Mike? You pointed out to me, it was state authoritarianism. Yeah. What's yeah, the worst extrapolation of this idea? If it yeah, continues yeah, down yeah. this path, what's the absolute... It was, it was horrific, wasn't it? I mean, no one want, you wouldn't want to live but, in the Soviet no. bloc, would you? Well, we've Talk known people who lived under communist rule, mm-hmm. and they have said it yeah. was not fun. You're yeah. in curfew every night, your phones mm-hmm. are probably tapped... You know, you add what you got, and that was kind of it. You know, your clothes are passed down to the family. Yeah. You had a ration for everything. Mm. You know, black market deals yeah. and your fucking thing. Well, the party members weren't like that. Party members weren't like oh, that. They were not. living the high life. They were drinking champagne. So it's an oligarchy. So it's an oligarchy. It's not so a pure communism, is it? But this, again, falls into the, the, the totalitarian state, totalitarianism, mm. yeah. where... Your lower party members are getting by on their victory gin and smoking their victory cigarettes and living. Twenty five grams of chocolate. A week. Twenty five grams of chocolate, which went down thirty five, but it told them went up from twenty. Yeah. And Mandela effect mm. kicks in. Well, they do that. So, did, did you last time they told you the fucking employment figures or whatever? Did you make a note of it? I know you didn't. Nobody did, but like, so they they probably fucking doing to that. Yeah, yeah. To so I don't know what it was. Employment's up by two. But oh, I can't remember what it was yeah. last time. You fucking. But said. they don't count people who've been out of work for a long time. People 
who are looking for work, I don't yeah. think, who came in or something. Yeah. It's ridiculous. It's just the only word claiming It's things. fudged, isn't it? Yeah. Know. It's just all, all numbers are fudged. Because you can have a, a uh, CEO who's just been made redundant and got a massive payoff and has hundreds of thousands on his bank account that doesn't, want, it doesn't need to claim because mm. you know he's going to walk into another high powered job in a couple of weeks. Yeah, but that's all these people do is rotate. It's like mm. Premiership football managers, they just rotate jobs. Mm. Bob and the top guys, they just rotate. Whereas us, we lose our job, it takes fucking ages to get another one. You're not even guaranteed. Uh, people in politics seem to fail upwards, don't they? Oh, they do. You know what I mean? Look at Boris. Yeah. <laughs> Look at Boris. <laughs> yeah. Perfect he, example. He was mayor of London. Trump. Shit at it. Oh, yeah. He got oh, bankrupt Trump. four times. Yeah. <laughs> you know, he took a small loan from his mm. father. Million mm. dollars. It's a small loan. Oh, so let's let's move Nobody on a little bit. Learns than me. Let's move on from our political debate and uh, go on then, Mike. What you got there? It's just about how does mind control work? Right. While the party controls Oceania's culture, economy, and politics system in 1984, it can never execute the totalitarian control and to gain control of the citizens' minds. The bulk of the party's energy, therefore, is spent on capturing and maintaining control over people's thoughts and feelings. The party's widespread use of surveillance prevents citizens from organising to overthrow it. For the novel, Winston walks past posters reminding him that Big Brother is watching you. The telescreen in his home, which cannot be turned off, has the power to monitor his movements and issue orders to correct his behaviour. Cameras and recording devices are frequently placed in public areas. Orwell takes this method of social control from the writings of uh, 1984, also the writings of 18th century English philosopher Jeremy Bentham, who designed new structures for prisons that would allow the guards to watch prisoners while preventing the prisoners from seeing the guards. Bentham believed that over time, prisoners had uh, internalised the surveillance of the guards and stopped engaging in criminal behaviour when released from prison. Interesting. Mm, yeah, it's quite sneaky. Winston Smith has psychologically internalised the party's surveillance and monitors his own actions and thoughts accordingly. His struggle not to think subversive thoughts, even when he is sure he's been monitored, critiques the soundness of Bentham's philosophy. When he and Julia meet up in the countryside, they at first refrain from speaking to each other in case microphones or recording devices have been hidden in the bushes, but eventually give in to their desire to be honest and open with each other. Along with party's authority, Winston has also internalised the party's fears and desires. When he edits the news report at the Ministry of Truth, he needs only to change the reference to an unperson. Instead, he invents Comrade Ogilvy, who is a perfect representative of everything... The party finds valuable, healthy, self-sacrificing, patriotic, chaste, all the things that Winston is not. Other characters have internalised the party as well. For example, Winston's neighbour Parsons, who praises his seven-year-old daughter for turning him into the party as a thought crime. Yeah, that's the guy. He's worked with, he's worked with that guy for how many years? And he's like, hey, did you see the prison next to you the other night? Oh, what's this then? And he's the one that complains at the media, isn't he? I don't know what this is. It's not meat, though. He probably said that at home, thinking it was a joke. And his indoctrinated daughter's like, he's a thought criminal. <laughs> he's he's uh, denying the party. He's denying this is meat. The party mm. says meat. Yep. Therefore, it's meat. You're a thought criminal. That's what it takes. And then he's dragged off the cells, beaten up, <laughs> and made to <laughs> yes. yeah. I mean, fuck's sake. That's where it ends up. The party also ensures control over citizens by disrupting personal loyalties to anything other than itself. Religion is outlawed because it represents a commitment to an authority higher than the government. Yeah, that makes sense. The family unit is disrupted as children are encouraged to spy on their parents and report any counterparty behaviour or attitudes. Suppression of sex outside the marriage prevents people from forming bonds beyond party-sanctioned relationships. The work Winston does for the Ministry of Truth aims to make the party's authority seem eternal and inevitable. By erasing any evidence of mistakes, poor decisions and opportunities for the party's actions to be criticised. The effect of his work at the Ministry of Truth 
is to confuse citizens and to make them doubt their own perceptions. Perception, deception? Mm. Oh. Perception is reality. When Winston mentions a photograph he found of Jones, Rutherford and uh, Aronson to O'Brien, O'Brien insists that the photograph never existed because he does not remember seeing it. Hearing this, Winston's heart sank, indicating that he has begun to surrender control of his own perceptions to Brian, to O'Brien. The party exploits personal and collective fears to maintain party loyalty and suppress revolt, both through the threat of violence and actual violence. One example is the cage of rats. O'Brien threatens Winston with after bugging the secret room and learning Winston has an intense fear of rats. Winston is also severely beaten in the process of confessing violence that he anticipated because, quote, Nobody spoke of such things, yet everybody knew of them. Mm. The citizens know the threat of violence is real and inevitable if they commit thought crimes. Without fully understanding how they know, another type of conditioning is seen in the cold, uncomfortable... Unappetising. Unappetising. Unappetising world 1984 is set in where goods are restricted and basic household items are often hard to find. In his manifesto, Goldstein posts posits. That, posits, sorry, that the constant wars are partly an effort to consume resources that would otherwise be shared amongst the people, keeping them in a state of productive and exploitable discomfort while still believing that their standard of living is rising every year. Even though it isn't. Even though, it isn't. <laughs> Even though it's getting worse. Yep. And you're living in a bombed out shithole mm. with a fucking television that can see you. Yep. And just, I think Judy is testing what, what time his lights out in your block. Because she's obviously younger than him, she's in her 20s, he's at 11.30. She's always 11 in mine. Because mm. re- electricity is rationed. Yep. The older people don't need as much sleep because as you get older, you don't need as much sleep. Mm. And boom, there you go. So you can have lights at eleven thirty. The young you need a bit more. They can have eleven. They can go at eleven. Everything's controlled. And also it stops them stops them doing stuff they're not supposed to. Yeah, it? everything's controlled to minute detail. Yeah. Nineteen eighty four is perhaps most famous for its exploration of the relationship between language and thought, and the way dishonest, inaccurate language leads to a breakdown of identity and a capacity for independent reasoning. Orwell was deeply concerned about how imprecise and euphemistic language dulled people's capacity for critical thought, Mm. which he wrote about in his famous essay, Politics and the English Language. Syme explains to Winston that the ultimate purpose of new speak is to eliminate thought crime by removing nuance from thought and narrowing the range of ways to express it. By creating nonsensical jargon only understood by the few workers who employ it, the party limits the potential of mass communication which is necessary for successful rebellion. Ah. When Newspeak becomes the only language spoken in Oceania, Orwell implies the party's control of the population will become total and absolute. The fact that the appendix is written in plain English, not Newspeak, offers hope that absolute party control has not yet become a reality. So when the proles start speaking, it you fucked. Yep. Yeah. Well, yeah, it makes sense. You you hold the language. You've got control. Mm -hmm. That's it. Well, I'm just reading here a little article about Newspeak, how it's used in the real world. There's sort of simple examples like uh, when the news says someone was fatally injured or passed away, which suggests it was no one's fault. The term tragedy does the same thing. It indicates that no one was at fault, but in the end, the term doesn't mean much more than it happened. And it doesn't mm-hmm. refer to mm-hmm. why the event happened. There is also this thing it says called econobabble. It's basically words that politicians, for the most part, say that mean basically nothing and are used to distract you from a greater point or an alternative issue. Things like the market responded well to the recent decision by insert political body or <laughs> politician yeah. don't mean anything. What market? The stock market. There is no definition beyond what they are talking about. The point is, we use words with differing connotations to distract from a greater point. So I'll tell you a major at the moment mm. is Medicare for All, is what Bernie wants, yeah. which is a single payer. Okay. Now what the establishment, established Democrats say, is universal health care, right. which means nothing. 
It doesn't yeah. actually mean anything. It's just a term. You know what I mean? Well, because Medicare for All has connotations as well. Everybody's going to get covered. But they say universal healthcare to trick people into thinking they want Medicare for All. Uh, what they really want is just universal access to healthcare. So why can't they just have what we have where, you know, you pay a bit, you, you, you sort of split your income tax and your national insurance. You, what we have is national insurance. Yeah. Well, you know and that why, pays yeah. the NHS. And we you just, know why. Well, yeah, because too many people are making too much money. Yeah. But you know, why can't they just put that as a model? So you know what, hey. That's what Bernie's done. Yeah. But the other Democrats, to seem as if they're on Bernie's side, won't say Medicare for <laughs> all, because when they get into office, they have to implement it. Yeah. What they say is universal yeah. access to yeah, health care. Yeah. Like which doesn't mean anything, but it sounds as though it means what he means. So when I they get you. in, they'll say, oh, I tried to do it, but the Republicans blocked me or something, or yeah. it isn't feasible anymore. I've changed my, my stance on it. So they don't want Medicare for all, then? Basically. Of course not. They're owned by the pharmaceutical companies. Bastards. Affirmative action. Oh, isn't that the uh, the thing? That, is it Bill Clinton that you that? Mm. In 1991, 92, where you can't get disbarred for a job because of your yeah. sex, race or basically, gender? Yeah, basically. Affirmative action and equal opportunity are code kind of for phrases with dis discrimination. Basically, we'll take anyone, however, unless or as long as they have our preferred gender or skin colour. Rather than troop increase, which implies an open-ended commitment of more troops to a failing war, a surge goes along with the idea of a power surge, a brief burst of energy, a troop surge. Yeah, these, these are real-world ones that politicians have used. Not incorrect. Yeah. <laughs> Think about it. Yeah, I heard that a lot. Well, he's right then. Isn't he? Mm. What? You were that, well, that's not incorrect. Uh, <laughs> terrorist surveillance program is the preferred term of the Bush administration towards their illegal, warrantless, unsupervised spying of American citizens. Yep. <laughs> it was also the phrase used by Fox News, right wing pundits, and right wing blogs. Terrorist surveillance program. Yeah. Uh, Alternative facts, that was a good one. Yeah. A mass casualty event. Really describes mass slaughter. Oof. Yeah. yeah, if you bomb a wedding with your drone mm. and like 300 people die, and you go, oh, it's a mass casualty event. You haven't got to give yeah. a statistic then, have you? You haven't got to give a figure. Oh, it's a mass casualty event. Don't worry about it. They usually say they're insurgents, don't they? Well, that's yeah. it, yeah. Stuff like uh, it says that anything that contains the word agenda, for example, homosexual agenda, left-wing agenda, reptilian right, agenda, right-wing right agenda, it qualifies as unspeak because it implies that homosexuals, lefties or righties, whichever group you're, you're applying it to, are all homogenous and mm. complete and in one yeah. eternal agreement, which they're clearly fucking not, isn't it? Yeah. You know, how can it be such a thing as the homosexual agenda? There's got to be millions Every of Every gay person in the, the world has exactly joined together the same. and sent letters to each other saying, hey, let's mm. try and get in power. But you hear that every fucking day, don't you? The left agenda, the right agenda. <sighs> fucking hell. Yeah. yeah, like I said, 1984, coming to a town near you soon. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I mean, it, it did. I'd, I'd have rather watched Threads again. <laughs> And watch this. I don't know if it's my own mental state or because of the, just the film. It was like, wow, is it? Well, it's not a happy film, Ben. No, it's I'll not. I'll give you that. I think I'd have rather, rather <laughs> watch Threads. <laughs> it just, I, you know, I had to watch this in two sittings. I've never done that for a movie review, apart mm. from when I've just ran out of time and even. I've never had to turn a film off and come back to it again. Well, you know, all the movie reviews you've done. Wait till we do Back to the Future. Oh, well, that's good. I'll try to do it there, won't I? Okay, well, we'll skip to um, Never Go Full Alex, the favourite game show in this flat. Every week, Mike finds us a couple of random weirdos he finds on the net, and then he puts them against the arch saint of insanity himself. Because remember, it's, it's all right to go a little bit Alex, quarter Alex, half Alex, three quarters Alex, full Alex on our podcast. <laughs> but um, oh, just stop doing that it, time basically. on the train. I was <laughs> half Alex at best. <laughs> I, I, I think I went for Alex of the week, so it's not alright to go for Alex. That's fine. Oh, I stand by everything I said. You went full Ben. I'd listen back before you say that. 
I um, haven't listened back yet. Oh right. <laughs> I'm, I'm like two. I have two. I did it like the third attempt, honestly. Mm. But yeah, I, haven't I been, stand by it. I haven't been driving, so I haven't had a chance to catch up. But right, anyway, let's let's yeah. do the game show. Were you trying to get crazy with this thing? Don't you know I'm local? Who got first, Mike? Okay, first up, these appear on an advert on one of my YouTube videos. Right. Right. Bible is the mark of the beast. Okay. okay. This is a random... This yeah. Is a, this is a 180. Yeah. Actually, this is a full 360. It is. Okay. <laughs> Do you know when many people die, they don't even know their date? You have to tell them their date. There's been people in hospitals come out of their body. And they'd be standing there, looking at you with a funny look on their face. And I have to tell them, you're dead now. <laughs> you go to the light. They don't even know they're dead. So today we're going to teach you about the keys to the kingdom of God. They don't understand spiritual things. See, they teach them that they're saved. Their sins are forgiven because of the blood, blood of Jesus, and that's true. But they don't go on and get in the Holy Ghost and understand the kingdom of God. And this one man said, I'm dead. I'm really dead. And one, said, man, one woman said, am I dead? <laughs> I had to tell them they're dead. They don't know they're dead. They go back home. Satan, <laughs> Satan has deceived the world. They don't understand mm. spiritual things. Now listen to this very closely today so you'll understand spiritual things. I thought you would do a book. It's just a piece I of paper. I will give unto you the keys of the kingdom. Now, if you have the keys to the car... Then I can get in the car and go wherever I need to go. If you have the keys to the kingdom... Then you can enter into the kingdom of heaven through Jesus Christ. And whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven. What shall you loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. According to the will of God. Yes. Okay, so well, then. <laughs> wow. <laughs> to tell these people they're dead. It's, it's not, it's not, Stop it's walking around hospitals telling old people they're dead, you fucking cunt. It's not very like, Christian. What do you mean? It's like they popped up and it was like, <laughs> people don't even know they're dead. <laughs> you you before, before I saw the headline, mm. this, and she's wearing uh, the Bible as an idol, and he's in the Bible as a mark, and he's like, oh my god, we've got a, an atheist couple here. Mm. Wow, we're actually going to have some non religious craziness. No. Turns out they're just as mad as everybody else. <laughs> you know they're dead. Huh? Well, fair enough. Imagine that you <laughs> wake up from an operation would you know that you guy were standing dead? over. You're dead, honey. <laughs> what? Would you know you were dead? <laughs> How'd you know? Um, well, because he's telling you. <laughs> uh, if somebody asked you, like, how do you know you're not dead? Well, well I don't really, do I? Like, to be perfectly honest, uh, it's, consciousness could be a waking dream. I don't know. I feel all right. I'm certainly going to say to this fucker, <laughs> could you possibly pop off the ward, <laughs> find me a doctor, Yeah. and we'll ask him, shall yeah. we? Give oh, you can chance. ask my wife, honey, tell him, oh, you dead. <laughs> no, please don't get one of those men in yeah, white coats. Yes, yeah, I need a doctor, please. Oh, no, you dead. <laughs> they start weaning you towards the incinerator. Oh, <laughs> fuck up! <laughs> I hope he's not wandering around the ward, just telling me. Of course me. he is. <laughs> You're dead. You don't even know you're dead. But you're dead. It's that fucking southern accent makes it so great. Soft southern, like, yeah. the pedo of family guy in it with the whistly teeth. Like. That's him, yeah. That's what he sounds like. Oh, you dead. <laughs> Ew. Oh, oh, fucking idiot. All right, then, well, next one. Fucking idiots. Next up, fire. Oh, the fire oh, better profit. no. Mark, tell you the, the, the mystery of the prophetic Regular elevators. Show. He's won in the past, hasn't he? Yes. He has. yeah. He's looking a bit dishevelled nowadays, though. His hair's getting longer. Mm. Okay, let's go for it. God was showing me something here. We've had two prophetic signs given, okay? And this is going to be interesting for everyone here. I want to talk about elevators for a minute. And let's go back to the Washington Monument. Now, the Lord talk, spoke about one of the prophecies about the Washington Monument. Now, we all know the Washington Monument is a phallic symbol to fail. Built by the Freemasons. We all know that. Uh, we've talked about this many times on the show. And it was literally damaged in an earthquake back in 2011. Now, it, it was about, I can't remember, somebody look it up quote, or, and quote me on this. 
is that uh, the Trump prophecy was written April 28, 2011. It was, I think it was after that the earthquake took place. So I, I find that a little astounding. I, somebody can correct me on that if I'm wrong. But it's the same year that the Trump prophecy was written. So they had this billionaire spend all this money on the Washington Monument to repair it and to repair the elevator on it. Well, the yeah. first uh, lady, Melania, was there at the grand opening the other day. And after the grand opening, I think it was either the day after or that same day, this brand new elevator takes a dump. Now, that's one, okay? I'm going to go to that in just a second. Now, the Pope. The Pope over there in the Vatican. Now, we all know the Vatican is, is, is demonic, okay? It's inside its own walls. You know, the, the, the Pope is his own hypocrite. He doesn't want anything to do with Well, we shouldn't have walls, but he's got them around the Vatican. That's okay, you know? He's in the elevator, and that elevator is just, I guess, I don't know which way the direction it was going, but it took a dump with him on it. So now, you take these two elevators. What does an elevator actually mean? An elevator means a change in the anointing. Hmm. Now, this is a huge sign, guys, a huge prophetic sign, that the Washington Monument, which represents Freemasonry, Illuminati, all these things that we're battling against right now, it stopped. It's a wow. change in the direction of that so-called power. The power... You, you see what I'm saying? I'm going with this? Yeah, I got it. Now, okay. let's go to the Vatican for a minute. Let's go back to the Vatican. The Pope's on there. He's on this thing. It stops. It's changing direction. It loses power. It, went, it stopped because of a loss of power, guys. This is huge. And this is a huge prophetic sign that says that the Pope has lost power. And so his, uh, his so-called anointing from the dark side has now changed, guys. This is a huge sign for everyone. This is, this is good news. That's what I, I want everybody to understand this, that these two prophetic signs are running together, literally within like days of one another, that this happened. Wow. 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 But didn't believe that Trump's elevator stop as well? Did he? Well, that's what he said. Could I just Ooh, take... Ivana Trump's... Could I point well, out... One of them was going up the, going up the Washington Monument as elevator, and that stopped. And but also the Pope stopped, but that's more significant than hers. Stop it, so you see what I mean. Did you catch his what he said was the definition of elevator that we all know? Anointing. I'll tell you what the definitions of elevator are. <laughs> you might be shocked. Okay. A platform or compartment housed in a shaft for raising and lowering people or things to different levels. I'm not shocked. Uh, shaft. Uh, a <laughs> <laughs> or a machine consisting of endless belt with scoops attached used for raising grain. A tall building used for storing grain. A hinged flap on the tailplane of an aircraft. A muscle whose contraction raises a part of the body. Uh, or oh, somebody has trademarked elevator to mean a shoe with a raised insole designed to make the wearer appear taller. Nowhere does it fucking mention... Anointing. Oh, possibly if we go back to mid-17th century. It's still talking about muscle. Even in Latin in the 17th century, it was still about a muscle that... Ra uh, uh, an elevator. It's so, not about anointing. So where's he pulled, he, so he's pulled that fucking definition out of his fucking arsehole. <laughs> yeah, probably. I like this guy, you know, because he can make anything sound convincing. <laughs> well, half convincing. No. I mean, it's, it's incredible. He that can just is... sit there and talk absolute shit. He's he's not Alex, but he's getting there. It's worse than numerology, isn't it? The lift run out of power. It's a sign. <laughs> the Pope's run out of power. Oh, yeah. power did he have in the so did, he hasn't so had did power for whoever a while, was going, he? whichever Trump was well, going to be. He's isn't he? Isn't he? Mm, well, I suppose he's figuratively powerful, isn't he? But ah, f fuck it, you know, that that's in the lead for me. Even I don't, I don't know. Is that above telling people they're dead when they're not dead? You did. No, because no, that's, uh, that's just idiocy. This is, this is, we're going, we're Alex. going, we're going Alex. Yeah, yeah, yeah this is Alex Touch. Okay, yeah, he's yeah. got it so far. Let's hear the man himself. I've got a funny feeling I'm going to agree with him this week. <laughs> Alex Jones on Joke. Greta Thunberg and the Democratic con job. Okay, did you send this to us in the week? Is this the one you sent to us in no. the week? No? Oh, it's a new one. Okay. All right, so let's see what Alex has got to say. How many people, you know, bought into the Nigerian scam? I know two people. Actually, three. One of them was I knew in business. They wouldn't talk to me after they got ripped off by him. They thought I called the Nigerians and stopped them from giving them the five mil. The left has bet on the scam so much and believe there's a, a pot of gold at the end of this tunnel. And they can't admit they've been conned, that they've got 
Workless educations that the whole system was built to make them dependent so they'd be pissed and follow the establishment around by the nose like a horde of lemmings off a cliff. So here's Greta being very threatening and demanding we all submit to her. And if you look at her and listen to her, she acts like the Grinch that stole Christmas, even has the same shape head. She's very disturbing. Here it is. My message is that we'll be watching you. Ah. <laughs> Back that up. Let's play that again. My message is I will be, we will be watching you <laughs> with the computers and the AI and the youth movement. And, the, and you hear the crowd go, ah, oh, oh, ah, the lust for total power. Continue, please. My message is that we'll be watching you. <laughs> Very sinister. This is all wrong. I shouldn't be up here. Yeah, I should be back in school. You're a minion. On the other side of the ocean. Ocean? Yet, you all come to us young people for hope. I'm sure. How dare you? You have stolen my dreams and my childhood. You are my enemy. Your words. And yet, back it up again. Five seconds. It's not the teachers that brainwashed her. It's not the parents that told her all these lies. You know, Al Gore 2003, the earth will be over by 2013. All of this. No, it's your fault. You have stolen my dreams. You have made me angry. And now I will invade you. I am watching you. You will submit to me. Let us continue. Well, for hope. How dare you? How dare you? You have stolen my dreams and my childhood with your empty words. And yet, I'm one of the lucky ones. All right, let's stop there. We'll play more of it later, but everything is projection. The globalists are trying to steal our dreams. They're trying to cut off the energy. They're trying to tell us that families are bad, break up families. They're doing everything they can to make us mentally ill, pushing all these dangerous drugs on us. <laughs> and then she said, you all just want the money. Save us some money, Lebowski. We are nihilists. We care about nothing except some money. It says I make you a nihilist. In fact, can we roll the Grinch, please? So. <laughs> the most likely reason of all may have been that his heart was two sizes too small. That's a good one. Because I told Dew, I said, hey, will you find this? There's one where he's straight on and he's mad. He gets an idea, a horrible idea. The most horrible idea is, is, is what they say. And then it, have her next to that, because he's making the exact same face, same shape head. You're a bad one, Mr. Grinch. And so we're going to have that for you, ladies and gentlemen. We're going to look at how the globalists strangle. Yeah, that's that's you that's close to it. Good right. board, me. Comparing it to the Grinch is, that's bullying, basically, but... yeah. I'd say so. It is a bit fucking weird. <laughs> like, come on. I mean, all right, you know. I'll, How dare you? I'll oh, fuck you. off, love. What have I done? I'm just living my life. You have stolen my she's childhood. No, that was you your though, parents. Guys. Them people running in She's not talking in. to you. She's hang talking on, to the people who wait, really wait, run the world. Break down what she actually fucking said. Said you have stolen my childhood. Well, don't they have she's stolen already, childhood. She's already had a childhood. She's sixteen. It, that was that was written for the hyperbole. I, I agree with you. The speech was written for her, stage and managed. she was stage managed to get aggressive and angry at the right times. I fully agree with you. But what she's saying is yeah. fucking wrong. It's not about the messengers, but the message, isn't it? Yeah. I mean, don't kill the messenger. It could not apply more to her. Yeah, but people did. Why is that a saying? Because kings often did just whip out their fucking rapier. <laughs> yeah, when they, and buff, when they, yeah, they, 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 can't, with, yes, they can't whip out a rapier and shoot somebody. A rapier mm. is a sword. Oh, now okay. they kill him with words and and, and smearing. No, I I think the pressure of being forced onto the global stage. Someone will have to take some responsibility somewhere. She's right. already she's already right. battled the depression all her life. Is, Probably is, when her parents yeah. told her when she was fucking nine or something. I was reading that like she went on a hunger strike when she discovered about the climate crisis and like nearly died, gave herself like developed anorexia. Oh yeah, sounds good, doesn't it? You're so, something that she's passionate about. 
I think it's good. I like it. I don't so. like it. <laughs> he, he, he could have done better there. He didn't go that mental. It was a bit bullying, but like, it was like, it wasn't that funny. It could have been, I've seen better memes than that over the last few days. And I didn't understand the comparison with her as a nihilist. I mean, she's the they opposite. Are, no, yeah. I don't know. Come on, think about it. I this is my problem. We were talking about this earlier before the mics went on. We were talking about how one of my problems with this uh, doomsday cult is the idea that it's so terrifying. They're basically telling you the planet is fucking over in thirty years. It's so terrifying. That's what the that, science says. But it's so terrifying though that it paralyzes people into just like oh, I can't do anything about it. Some and it people, is a yeah, nihilistic. Other people, it, will raise it might be them realistic, but it's also nihilistic, isn't it? She said, "Act like the house is on fire." Right, that's pretty nihilistic, isn't it? But it's on fire. The Amazon's on fire. It's the lungs of the planet. I tell you, it's fucking nihilistic. The people at the top. Yeah, but they're causing this shit. I don't know. Look, they're nihilistic. And the the Amazon is on fire. It's the lungs of the planet. We are burning the trees. On a massive scale that we depend upon for oxygen. And releasing more carbon. And releasing more carbon in the atmosphere. Is she right to be alarmist at 16? If I was at that sort of level at 16, which I wasn't, I used to talk about bands and girls. Could then she be? Maybe, yes. I mean, come on. I mean, but could she be a bit less no annoying about it? What do you, know what what you mean? want? <laughs> I want. I don't <laughs> want a creepy little fucking cunt telling me well, it. What do you mean if a 16 year old Jew was telling you it? What the fuck's it being a Jew got to do with it? <laughs> 16 year old Jew. <laughs> me? <Yeah. laughs> we well, have a 16 year old Michael saying about it. 16 year old me. I think exactly the fucking same. I think get this is, fucking little the point brick. We are at a certain age where we're like, get it's, this little brick. And it's my fucking we're right. And we're very, five year old. We're policemen seem young guys. I know. <laughs> Oh, look at that young copper. You don't tell me what to do. And that's exactly the same philosophy. Have you never found it funny when somebody's disproportionately upset about something that you don't give a fuck about? Yes, I have, yes. That's exactly how I feel what I do. Maybe every week, every time we do this podcast. My childhood. (laughs) It's like, oh, fuck. That was stage managed. That was written for her. I don't deny that. That was... That mm. was absolutely written for her. But you missed that the was point. not her. Was I'm not missing the point because she means it. Yeah, it was written for her, but she still means yeah. it. She just didn't have the words to express but it. But the point is, what I'm going to make is the fact that what kind of a world do we live in where it takes a 16 year old girl to talk That's to the UN? That's why it's her, though, Mike. On purpose of all the fucking people in the world, why is it <laughs> fucking her? Because she's a fucking 16 year old girl with autism. It could be anybody. Because it makes it hard for people to fucking criticise it, which is why I refuse to not criticise it. You're admitting to an agenda? Yeah, fuck her, she's 16, she can fuck her. You're admitting to a left wing agenda? That globalism, that climate change isn't real, that globalism is. No, I haven't said any of that. No, I haven't. Where did I say that? No. No, by the. hang on. I this. No, 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 no. I'm not saying I disagree with any of the message. It's the entire oh, it's the fucking it's the messenger of Greta. It's the fact that she's it, 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 like to get the world to listen. We're going to use this fucking perfect like. Well, we found our fucking Michael Jordan here. We're going. This is how we're going to get the world to listen. Maybe she's just a. A. It's annoying. <laughs> B. How's it going to end for her? How's it going to end for her? Probably in a drug overdose in a Parisian hotel. It's not going to have a happy life. And all these people that are like, fucking go Greta, like, where are no, they going to be I'm in like 10 people. years' time when she's a fucking nobody and nobody no. gives a fuck? I'm not one of them people. I'm, not, I'm on the cold. You mm. think it's quite sad when a 16-year-old girl has to go to the UN and say, hey, you're killing the fucking planet for the rest of us. And again, like I said earlier, I'm not denying any of that, but like I said earlier, when it was that lad in the MAGA hat, he was yeah. 16... And it was perfectly fine for everybody to say whatever the fuck they wanted about him because he was a conservative boy, right? Because she's a liberal girl and she's 16. Well, no, all of a sudden no, now they're all that. taking them. No, it's no, a, they are online. It's a bigger issue than that. No, it's whatever to me. Online, I don't give a fuck about the climate whatever issues. They say, whatever they say online, it's a bigger issue than that. This affects all of us, not just America. This affects mm. all of us. This affects our future generations. No. This affects our children. And we're in an age where we should be having, having yeah. kids. We're, this is affecting our children, our grandchildren. But I'm not. It's, not, it's, it's, it's not the only person that stood up. 
No. Leonardo mm. DiCaprio is sort of and stuff, I think. Oh, fuck him. What does he know? He's an actor. I agree anyway, with that, actually. My, no, my point is, listen, 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 I need to, I need well, to no, state no. my point. I need to okay, state, state my point. state your point. My fucking point And is, accept your rebuttal, but accept, just no, state no, your no. point. Is that fucking, the climate's the climate. What the fuck can I do about the climate? What I'm fucking angry about and The is, answer is you can't do nothing about it apart from what you're told to do. Which is you can stop drive, me. drive a better car, which you're doing, and recycle. And that's at the moment. Is it going to fucking stop the thirty-year crisis? No, so what's some, the fucking point? Can, can I finish some, my point? You, yeah, you got If everybody right. stopped flying and became vegans, oh fuck that shit! I'm not doing that. No, but I'm just saying I'm making a point. You said there's no way we can do it. I'm saying that we could. Actually. I'm not stopping eating meat. <laughs> no, that's fine. I'll always save the planet, but I'm not stopping eating. I'm meat. just saying that's the way to do it individually. But as a hundred companies are responsible for seventy percent of the emissions. Well, let's tax them bastards like a 99% and make it so they can't and put all that money back into doing solar panels and every house and hydroelectricity and and, uh, and wind. Yeah. And, uh, and That's what Labour will do. <laughs> but, you know, but, I mean, the message isn't wrong. What you've got a problem with is the messenger. Well, I've got a problem with the fact that I'm not allowed to criticise the fucking messenger. Because you can criticise the messenger all you want. No, but that's... Oh. Well, no, you can't, because everyone says it's not a 16-year-old girl. No, exactly. But, but when it was a 16-year-old boy, you were allowed to say whatever the fuck you wanted to. Everyone's a fucking hypocrite, I don't have an that's my on point. That. Either way, to be fair, he's a loudest point of view. The problem is she's on speaking to the UN about a potential doomsday scenario, and he's having a go at a native Indian man. That channel, he wasn't... Native American, that well, he wasn't... But the, whatever. But you're whatever completely he was doing. missing my point. My point is... Like... <laughs> can, can we For put fuck's sake, this? you I'm, cannot fucking no. dictate to me I'm not who I can. Anything. I'm not talking to you for fuck's sake, the proverbial you. Fuck me. Dictate to fucking me who I can and can't fucking criticise and take the piss out of based on what fucking mental illnesses they've got, what fucking gender they are. If I can take the piss out of one, I can fucking take the piss out of the other. Right? I can give a fuck about the climate. What the fuck am I going to do to stop the fucking climate? What am I going to fucking do? It's like trying to stop a fucking flood with a teaspoon or curing fucking cancer with a fucking band-aid. What the fuck use does it make? It's fuck... I'm not joining their fucking doomsday cult. But she's not talking to you. Who the fuck... Why is it on fucking TV then? We're just showing it, but she's talking to the... Why is everyone trying to shut me down for slagging it off? And slagging her off? I'll just shut you down for anything. Yes, I agree with you. No. I do half agree with you. She's been stage managed. Oh, She's fucking, a I've wanted to do this for about two years, listener. I'm doing an experiment now. Oh, man. Thank you for listening, if you have been. <laughs> this is all my equipment. I fucking set it up. Fuck Greta Thunberg. And the little kid in the MAGA hat. I'll talk to you next week. Thank you. Goodbye. I'm only joking. You can finish. <laughs> I've still got to press pause. I've turned the line off now. <laughs> Fuck her. Fuck the Greens. The lefties and the righties. Come on. Let's wrap it up. I'm done. Who's gone full Alex then? The Gaz. <laughs> <laughs> you Gaz wins this week. Gaz wins this week. <laughs> Can we have the volume back up? We're up. Yeah. We're up. Gaz wins this week. Fuck her and her parents. <laughs> failed fucking opera singer and a fucking you failed actor. Up, ben? Yeah. But the been planet's been. fucked as fuck. All you can do to save it. <laughs> you little pricks. Gaz goes for Alex. He's going to be spending more money. money. He's still going for Alex. <laughs> <laughs> I've been bad. You're going to spend the next 30 years thinking about how we're fucked. I'm not. I'm going to fucking turn the heat and I'm going to get home and open the fucking windows. Fuck them. <laughs> <laughs> fucking cunting polar bears. Gives a fuck. <laughs> Absolutely who gives a fuck. <laughs> fucking bills to pay. <sighs> fuck them. And what the fuck's this distracting you from? What the fuck are they up to? Well, they're fucking kids and drinking them between the exactly. crew. That's what it's distracting you from. <laughs> Oh, there's aliens! There's every conspiracy theory that you know is absolutely right and this is just a distraction. Oh. Fuck them.
I'm not joining the cult. Oh. Subscribe to Sewage Pipe Games on YouTube. No, you don't get the right to say that this week. Yeah, I do. <laughs> you don't. Fuck them. You've gone full Alex. Nothing can be said until the next week. Until next week. So, that's been Gas. I've been Ben. I'm, I'm endorsing censorship at this point. Fuck After them. a show about free speech, I'm endorsing censorship. That's my right. I've been Ben. Don't do the flame raid. Don't do the cult. Mike. I've been Mike. Thanks for listening. Peace out. May the force be with you. Gas has been here. <laughs>
with a similar mindset to her go and vote, one day they'll actually make a difference in this shitty system we've got. It'll be too late for me by then, Ben. But it probably will be too late for us. But at least you might like to see our lives Who in a they, fucking this flooded magical, wasteland who's rather this than magical just... magical fucking party they're going to vote for in two I have no years idea because I can't fucking see the future. <laughs> Nothing's going to Something change. could happen. You don't know what's going to happen tomorrow. Never One minute we're in hard Brexit, the next minute the law's changed and we can't. One thing that hasn't changed is we're still plebeians. And we we're still the proletariat, be. yes. They'll never, never change. We're still the proletariat. All the movements of the yeah. world. Smash the system. <sighs> Good luck with that, boys. <laughs> you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to play PlayStation. <laughs> I'm probably going to drink myself in the next fucking multiverse, to be fair. That's my <laughs> kind of moment. I'm going to share Greta memes. You know. To be fair. Really to that's make my plan. Feel better. I'm going to just no, smash myself not. in the next multiverse and hope that everything turned out better in that one. No, you're not. You're going to... Uh, Soldier on through. Okay. That's the end. Fight the power. Oh, we were still recording? Yeah, oh yeah, I put it back Oh, on. well, you've got to cut out the bit record a retard and a faggot Oh, then. no, let's go. <laughs> <laughs> I, I did tell you we were recording still, because I couldn't not lose Stop this far. <laughs>